Good evening. Welcome to the October 7th, 2020 Select Board Board of Health meeting here at 5.07 p.m. at the main meeting room in municipal offices of 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Meetings normally held at municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with Governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT, and the um, connection, meeting connection below is dial-in number 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099 or 833-548-0276, which is toll-free. Our meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. We are now on generator power, and I hope people are able to participate, even though the storm, it, it looks like it's passed, and most of it went to the north of us, but it was really rough here for a while. So hopefully there's no issues. We have um, at first appearance is Lori Bashada and um, M.A. Sweetland. Uh, talking about our climate change bill. Whoops. Yep. Uh, Are we back on? Maybe we're back on now. All right, let me try this again. Probably just switch back to regular power. You might have switched back. Yeah. We're off the air. Uh oh. Do we lose power or are we back on power? Back on now. It's back on now. I think it's regular power, not generator. I think right. we're on regular power, yeah. M.A., did you lose the meeting? Why don't one of you, is Jennifer reporting the meeting? Or we're trying, but. Yeah, yes. I don't know what happened. Because I need yes. to do this then, because this is getting screwed up and all. Yeah. M.A. is still here. Sorry, it's still okay. here. Oh, we think we got our power back and it kicked us off the generator and shut everything point. down. So we're going to start in just a minute, M.A. I'm not going anywhere for a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good to know. That's not true, actually, but it sounded good. How are your few kids doing out on the West Coast? My kids out on the West Coast are in Brazil. Oh, <laughs> well, how are they doing down there with all the COVID stuff? Uh, equally, equally well as they might be doing on the West Coast. <laughs> oh. No, no fires exactly where they are, but Brazil and the U.S. are in a lot of the similar situations. Yeah. I know. Um, We're leaders, <laughs> but but they're they're in they're teaching in a, the American International School in Brasilia, and they are feeling relatively safe. And their kids, oh, they and their kids can walk to school, so they don't have to worry about public transportation or school buses yeah. or any of the things they would be worrying about at home. Okay. Well, we're going back online again, so. <laughs> you guys may as well just resume without me because there's, uh, it's a little nutty. Okay. I'll just get the recording from Jennifer and I'll do the best I can to broadcast you guys now. Okay. Okay. Well, thank God for Trevor. He's, he's figured out how to use these big screen things. Trevor, I am really impressed. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, this is wonderful. We're back on, I believe. Okay. Um, you want to maximize the screen? Yep. All right. All right, M.A. and Annalie and Lori, I see you're on. 
Oh, Mary's on. Mary Byrne and okay. Well, we're back on. I'm sorry for the interruption. So um, we are having an appearance by uh, the Energy Committee. So go ahead. Are you? Hey, May, do you want do you want to go first or shall I? Uh, I can I can go first. I'm going to be quick. You've got more detailed information. If unless they unless the energy unless the select board would prefer a different order. No, that's fine. Okay. Um, so uh, we were asked by uh, some of the climate activists in town, uh, particularly Sherry Morgan, um, to consider writing a letter to the conference committee. It's a letter that the city of Newton drafted and was sent around. Um, and the energy committee made some uh, corrections or uh, some uh, edits so that it would pertain to Deerfield. And, um, and then unfortunately for Jennifer, we had a meeting and nobody showed up at the meeting and Jennifer, except for Jennifer and Steve Iper. So uh, we, I apologize to Jennifer for wasting her time, but it makes sense that you guys go ahead before us and because it'll be a while before we can get an, an energy committee meeting going again. So this, the conference committee is meeting right now on the climate bill. Um, they have until January to get it done, uh, but they could get it done at any time. We don't know where they are or even what they're discussing because they don't have to tell us. Um, but at some point they'll come out and say, we've reached a consensus or whatever they have to reach. And then, and then the, bill, the bill will go to the House and the Senate with no amendments allowed. So this is, this is the time when they can make changes. And so this letter basically comes from, uh, would come from you all if you are willing to do it. And it basically just uses the same uh, recommendations that the city of Newton had, which are, you know, just to make the uh, climate bill stronger. So my only, uh, my only concern, and it's, I'm not extremely versed in these bills. So, um, I, I, you know, fully support climate change legislation. It's obviously a serious issue and we need to, you know, do most everything we can. Um, I do have a, a bit of a concern with the cost of housing. So I, I think it's important that we find ways to make buildings more energy efficient. There should be, you know, um, there was in the 2000s, um, and I heard Biden talking about it quite a bit of, you know, incentivizing people to change their windows and reinstallate and, you know, find ways to do LED lighting and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but in the building industry, and I, what I'm recognizing is that there is, there are people who have plenty of money, can build any house to any, reg, any regulation we set forward. Um, those are the second home people and the, and the retirees that have enough money. Um, but there is, there is a serious problem with entry level um, young kids just getting married, trying to you know, either build or get into their first home. And I worry about the cost also of, of seniors that are trying to sell their home downsize and, and build a home. And it is extremely expensive right now, really almost cost prohibitive to build nowadays. The cost of land, the cost of you know, materials right now, framing materials have gone up double. Uh, so if people had bid a house right now, you went to buy framing material, Lumber is twice the cost of what you bid the house just six, you know, six months ago, um, and, and all of that will will level out again. Um, so my only real concern is that we also have to look at cost. So there's got to be a way in this legislation, and maybe it's here. And again, I'm not an expert on this, and just from a layman's term, being in the building industry, um, we have created so much regulation. 
to, um, to you know, rightly make the homes that we live in as efficient as, efficient as we can, but, but completely, you know, striving for a zero net energy home is great if you have the money, but a lot of people don't have that, those funds, and it becomes so expensive to build a home and live in a home today. And I know we're a stretch, stretch energy community, um, and, and I think, I, and I, I laud all the effort. It's not like I'm against any of that. I just want to pay attention to um, the real struggle it is for people starting out today trying to build a home or get into a home. Um, it, it's very, very expensive. And, and the regulations that we lay out, while they're all good intentions, drive a lot of people out of the market and unattainable. And I worry about Deerfield, where do we, you know, where is there land to build? We want to get you know, younger people, more diversity in our community. Um, I, I just don't know if, if you know, the land is $100,000 an acre here, pretty much. Um, a lot of places in town, if you're going to find a piece of land just to get started. And it's just unattainable compared to, you know, 50 years ago when you could build a house for 25 grand. You know, now it's just un unbelievable. But I lost your effort on this and, and I, you know, I support it. I just don't know. You know, when, when, when I, because I don't have time to go through all the bills, or it would be great to have, you know, um, our, our house representative here to kind of give us an update on where some of this is. While I support it, I also blindly sometimes support, you know, a feel good way to do this and then realize, oh, wait a minute, now we can't afford to build houses at all. Um, that's just my two cents. But um, anybody, any comments on that? Was there a no. question? <laughs> I don't have any questions. I just you okay. Know, my... um, so I think I think there are a variety of answers to this. Um, and if the state does put something like this into effect, um, there are there are uh, one of the things that has 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 been proposed and has. Um, and is uh, being considered also is a green bank where you could get mm -hmm. basically interest-free loans um, from, a, from a, a state organized green bank. They, they have them in Connecticut yep. and I think in New York. And uh, the legislature is talking about that. So that is one, okay. one way that, that financing can be much, can be made very uh, accessible to, to uh, builders perfect. and a lot a lot of the things that you brought up are are uh, impediments that that this bill wouldn't really make any worse or better the cost of land the cost of materials um you know it's it's, it's, it's it is it's stress. you know it's making it the, the cost of building that house to be regulations have, have really increased the cost of a house, you know, like $20,000 over, you know, what it was back in the day when you could build it with anything you want. Now, I, don't, I agree that we need to make them tighter and, you know, seal the silk plates and seal the, the light sockets and foam the e edges and all that. But, um, I think, I think the, other, the other thing is, is that if you can, if you can get a, a, a very low interest loan, um, the payback right. on a net zero house is pretty amazing. And yep. so the, 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 the amount that you're saving from building a house that is, well, I mean, if you look at the, um, at no, I think we're thinking about the purchase cost versus the cost of living there and the maintenance and operations and utilities cost. And it's a, it's a definitely a switch in, um, you know, in thinking, and there are other bills I think that deal deal with weatherization funding, um, things like with what Mass Save is doing and the Solarize um, is supposed yep. to do through the Clean Energy Center. But I, I think this is one of those transitions, Trevor, where things cost more at the change point, but once the regulations are in place, uh, industry adjusts and things things will um, settle out. 
but it really is like a new normal that we have to start looking at if we're gonna. And that, I guess we need to we need to make a change, and it needs to be dramatic. I get that. I just want to make sure that while we're doing that, we do recognize that it does price low income out of the market, and it prices you know it's very expensive to build in this way. But I get it. Over 30 years, less expensive to run your home, and right. your, your monthly bills are less expensive. It's just that initial buy-in is. Right. It's very tough for, for low income or, or, or you know entry level you know mom, you know little you know, kids that are just getting married 20 years old to start a family and you know aren't making a lot of money yet um, it's, it's difficult. Well, it's, ab help, but I guess, it's absolutely I difficult. If there's and other um, other that you know like you mentioned the the um, the, the the green thing you know those kinds of things that help offset yeah that that makes a lot of sense. Um, so if there's if there's things in legislation like that, to help that that hurdle for the for low income, it makes yeah. And the the you know, problem is support. the problem with the legislature is is that none of these things are all they're not they're not all put together and thought through right in, in a way yep. so that it all happens at the same time. But I know that the Green Bank is getting a lot of um, good publicity these days, and I think it's closer to passing than it ever has been. But yeah. um, okay. And, and I mean, Deerfield, Deerfield prices itself out of the group of people you're talking about. If they have to pay $100,000 for their lot, um, I, that, I think that's a way bigger problem than a net zero home. But, you know, hey. Yeah, it is. But it's just when you combine all of that. Yeah, it just absolutely. Becomes, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Okay. That's all I had. So, any, anybody else have anything? No. Um, but I agree with you. I mean, it's really it's not yeah, and and I agree. We need to we need to make a large change to, to so that people can actually live in the future. <laughs> there's right. air to breathe, and right, you know, it makes, you know there, there's but, all the other important things like yeah. Yeah, it's but not going to be I'm free, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think the other thing that you need to consider is is it is a letter to a conf committee that may well not do do this at all. <laughs> I mean, in other words, it's not a foregone conclusion that they will take our recommendations. Sure, sure, yep. Um, I feel like we need, to, we should send something though to have mm -hmm. some impact. Yep. I mean, I is, certainly is, hope. Uh, is, there a, is there a time frame on when this needs to get sent? Uh, I think the sooner the better. Um, they 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 could rep i don't without knowing where they are which we can't find out um they could report they they could they could come to a conclusion uh tomorrow or in december um but okay. since, we, since we don't know the sooner the better because they may they they've been in conference for uh probably a month already so we don't know if natalie's on this any of these she committees. is not. The, the number, the members are up at the top. It's it's Bradley Jones, oh, okay. Thomas yeah. Golden, Patricia Hadid, Michael Barrett, Cynthia Cream, and Patrick O'Connor. Okay. Those are those are none of the none that I'm familiar with. No, me neither. They're are they all Eastern. Probably. Oh. Uh, I, I, yes, they are. None of them are from, from Western Mass. Barrett is, is somebody who is, who, they're, some, they, they're in varying degrees supportive of these, of, uh, of uh, climate, climate uh, yeah. regulation. Yeah. Uh, I can't, I can't tell you, I mean, they, you know, they're people that are just appointed by the, by the, uh, speaker and sure. uh, yep. you know so it, well, it is what it is i'm well i'm concerned about um the tap you know the solar and wind tax and all that kind of stuff we want to see that go forward yes and um so i think we should send a bill um i mean send a bill send, send, a, letter. A, send a letter mm -hmm. in, in support of at least a sub, couple of these things for sure right um, well, I think that, you know, if you want, if, if your choice, it's your choice, obviously, to cut out that paragraph on the uh, um, building regulations. 
and st and send the rest of the letter as it is. I think. Um, I mean, you can. Well, the problem. Is, I mean, we're already a stretch energy co community. Right. So. Right. I know right, but, that, but there's no different at this point in time. There's no difference between the stretch code uh, and the building code. Yeah, it hasn't been yeah. it hasn't zero been changed. Code. So, do we have any idea what the net zero is going to add on to? I, I mean, people felt that there was probably a ten or fifteen percent increase going to stretch code. But is that a similar kind of jump to the net zero, or are we talking like a 30 or 40 percent? I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, what I do know is that there was not, uh, uh, there was a lot of um, concern, this very same concern when we went to the stretch code, and I think it had virtually no effect on the number of houses that were built or what's happening in town or, you know, mm -hmm. at the time we were at a, in a place where the economy wasn't doing great and now and then so then so no houses were being built when that first got passed and now houses are being were being built well, not right now but before covid they were being built like crazy uh we've had a lot of new houses built and you know the stretch code didn't affect that might I suggest that the select board query the building commissioner because he's going to have a much better idea of what this this net of the net zero effect would be because he's out right. there in the trenches. But I would also that say was going to be my suggestion. The, the, the one thing is, is that he may say, well, this is what it's going to be. But if you're looking at the current situation where the cost of lumber and the cost of everything is way up, uh, you need to separate that out from I don't know when uh, you know, or how you do that. But I, I think taking the current situation of COVID and, and the demands uh, for, for materials no. right now. Right. Um, He's got 25 years experience in the industry. I mean, I think he can no. probably- so, so, so long as, so yeah, so long as we aren't talking about what it costs. Apples and right. oranges. Yeah, right. yeah right. exactly. Yeah, more of a long- If term. I can just, um, yeah, so one, one problem with that, um, Casey, I, I see is that if if only a few um, houses are you know going um, the full distance and the whole industry isn't changing, it, it really changes how the whole market works. And I think this is this is kind of um, going to change the rules, but it won't really take effect in I don't know uh, at least a few years down the road. So. No. Let me disagree with you respectfully, Lori. The difference between the house that we were trying to build is $300,000 because of this. Because of net zero? For materials, yes, M.A. And but, it's not a large house. But, I mean, we had the land fire. Were you no, we're not. Zero? We're not. But we're making, we were making that effort to yeah. build a house that was net zero yeah, as close as we yeah. could get. And it was three hundred thousand dollars difference. We're looking at a six hundred thousand dollar house, and that's, that's a lot of money. I was sort of thinking in my in the back of my head as Trevor was, and you know, I'm just saying as an ex, as a person sure. in her sure. not quite fifties, sure. that's a daunting amount of money. Sure. To it to trying is. to build a house, but if you so, think about twenty years of utility bills, exactly, then utilities are going to go up. You know, and that's are. the only reason we're still thinking. <laughs> <laughs> is because the utility cost is less, but the barrier to make those changes is significant. And so, yes, the point of, of what you're saying is, is if you don't make the change, you don't get past the barrier. On right. the other hand, is there's that, there's that barrier in the beginning that a lot of younger folks aren't going to be able to get past for a significant amount of time. And that's the place where younger folks leave the state. Right. And, and so that's one thing to consider is what's that effect going to be? We already get a lot of people leaving the state. If the committee, if the committee feels, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, just take that paragraph out. That's what I was going to suggest. Annalie has a question. Yeah, Annalie. You're muted, Annalie. Annalie, you're muted. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Don't you hate that, Annalie, when you realize you're muted? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I certainly understand the bind that we feel, and I have 
kids myself who are trying to get into the housing market. I think if we were to have someone like, you know, Dick or someone to give this, basically the downside financially of Im imposing yeah. these restrictions, you know, we don't have anyone speaking on the other side, which is in fact the well, incredible cost. I think we could arrange that. I think we can arrange that. I mean, I know a lot of people in the, in the industry, in the building industry that, you know, that do this for, you know, I think of Decamon is green out in Lenox. They, this is all they do. They do green, I mean, Decamon Green is the company that's, you know, name of the company. And he, he builds strictly, you know, low energy, low energy use, you know, housing. Uh, I think Paul Hewing and Longmeadow, I work with a ton and he teaches classes on this. So we can get, you know, we can get pros and cons. That's why I asked the timing, because it would be interesting to see specifically what's in here, what the cost is, and, uh, and the benefits long term. And um, it, so, it, so it's hard sometimes for me to, to just sign off on something, because it, it does feel good. I, I, I agree with it in principle. It's just, okay, so what are, the, what are those negative, you know, consequences? My, my suggestion is that you take that paragraph out, send the letter, do our research and advocate and, and, and decide whether we're going to add and we can advocate for it separately or not yep. after we've done our research. Okay. Actually, that's a really good solution because that way we're, we're, we're being timely as best we can on the majority of on this. the majority. Yep. Okay. Um, I would make a motion to that effect. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? I'd second that. Trevor McDaniel. Dave, do you have any more questions or? Um, um, I really don't, you know, I'm going to vote no right now because of the fact that I've got to talk to Bob. Okay. Before I make any decisions on this. All right. And we can do that still. Yeah. I, I still think we could do that and, and still get this letter out before our next meeting. Because the rest is on uh, yeah. net metering and yeah. 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 Solo, that kind of thing. So. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Are you going to say that? Uh, Trevor McDaniel, right. I turn the net. Um, Dave, would you like Dave Wolfram, no. Okay, perfect. Um, so, MA, I think what we're going to do is do what you suggested. We're going to take it and talk to um, Bob. We'll get the letter out with the majority of, if we can, and then we'll also maybe send a separate letter once we figure yeah, out how we can word this. I'd like to pull Section. yeah, yeah. who do this work yeah. and see what they think of it. Because I, I, we want to support this kind of stuff. I do. I mean, we really do. Yeah. And, no, I know. Uh, I know. I know. I, I totally get that. And I'm, I'm not uh, arguing with, with the problem. We uh, also have the New England Sustainable Energy Association in Greenfield. They probably will have some useful information for us. Yeah. And CEC? Yeah. C -E -C well, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, and Jennifer Jennifer right. Marapisi built a net zero house in right in Deerfield. Yeah. So. Yep. Yep. Well, yeah, she, she renovated, was, which is even harder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Sure. Renovated. Exactly. Yep. For sure. Okay. Well, okay. thank you. Yep. And then so. Thank you. We have a year. Um, so, Lori, do you want to talk about um, the um, charging station? Yes. So did you get a chance to look at the, um, the proposal that I drafted? Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, I did. And do we need background information or are you up to speed on all the different costs? Well, why don't you just give us a, um, a background information for those of people that are listening that okay. can't remember when we've okay. been talking about this for a few months. Right, that's true. Okay, so we did um, receive funding from the Green Communities Grant. I, I think we actually received it <laughs> um, to buy the, the charging station. So we'll have um, two ports, so two cars can be charged at the same time. And um, the company would also, um, let me finish reading my, i got an email open here, they would also, um, install it, connect the electrical, and activate it. But what the, the chart, um, what the, just lost my 
what the grant will not pay for is the network fee to, to the software because there has to be a system where um, people um, log in with um, a, a card. Like um, this will probably a state be a station run by the company called ChargePoint, so they have to get a ChargePoint card, and so we need software to run that. And um, that grant also does not pay for electricity. So. My thought is um, to, and I got this, this idea from um, at Arcadia Wildlife Sanctuary in East Hampton, their um, electric vehicle charging station has a sign on it that it's sponsored by um, a company in East Hampton. So I thought since this would be located right next to Greenfield Savings Bank, it would be good publicity um, for the bank to show that they are not only anti-racist, as their posters show, but that they are uh, green and thinking forward. Um, so I um, noticed that they have a community support um, funding program, and we, we would be asking them, and, and my thought right now, we could discuss this, was to ask them for five years worth of funding. Um, we know what the, the, the software fee would cost. It's hard to... Uh, itemize exactly what the, well, we really can only guess what the electricity cost would be because, well, the, the cost is going to change and also we don't know what the usage will be. But I think it will encourage usage if we can make it free for the first few years. That sounds really good. Um, so is Greenfield Savings Bank willing to entertain this? Or well, you're just I, asking permission to move I'm asking, forward with that? Yes, I'm asking. Um, first of all, the application is online, and then I'm not sure exactly the procedure. Um, if if it's if it's the appropriate method for me to kind of take the lead on this, I guess I would call and follow up and see what they needed from that. But the application requires the um, the town tax ID number. Yeah. Yeah. So we can get that for you. And yes, the town does uh, bank with GSB, the Greenfield Savings Bank. I know that oh, was a yeah. question on your, your end. Oh, it yes, does. Do I check with Barbara today? Yeah. So oh, we okay. do, um, I did ask, good. Lori, I sent um, Barbara an email about it. I don't know what kind of accounts we have. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so should I wait to get that from you, Casey? Or? Um, I'll ask her to send it to you. How's that? Okay. Just basic information on the accounts. Okay. If that would be helpful. Yeah, um, I don't know what details they'll ask, but it would be good for me to know. Um, okay, and then okay. we can submit the tax ID. Um, I don't know if there's any specifics in the writing, but I just tried to summarize, you know, what we've done before and um, and what we're hoping the no, good, what the um, philosophy is of doing this. Go ahead. Um, I think I think this because this is a request for more than five hundred dollars. I think. We need to vote on that. So, um, so I, make, I would make a motion to, you know, to uh, approve the, the energy committee to move forward with a request for a grant, I think, from uh, Greenfield Savings Bank uh, uh, for the implementation help for cost of the EV charging station, which will be at the Leary lot. Correct. I think that's where we're going to put it. Yeah. And I think it is a good idea as well to have the five years for free charging. That would encourage people, definitely. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. But would you look for the discussion? Yeah. If we don't have a sponsor for it, it will not be free, in my opinion. Right. You'll have to charge for it. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, if, if we have a sponsor, that's fine. But, you know, the town can't be, it'd be like, okay. Yeah. No, we're not. Right. Yeah, we're going to charge for it. Yeah, right. And and I think what will happen with that, David, is um, as demand, you know, maybe initially there won't be a lot of use, but once it's there, and as um, electrical uh, gas costs go up, you know, right now the cost of gas is so low, it's there's not a huge incentive to plug in. But you know, so as these right. things change, you know, the there might be more. Um, demand for using that electric charging station and again it is very forward thinking of our town to to go ahead with this yeah and i agree with that completely yep. it's just that you know it's just you know as we get more solar more wind power and everything you know uh, getting away from the fossil fuels the electric vehicles even become 
make more sense to me. Oh, totally. And, you know, I think that you're going to see more and more of them as time goes. Well, and the big the piece I put in the letter that I think is um, like really directly um, applicable to downtown Deerfield is that when you're, you know, stalled out at the intersection or you're waiting in the drive through, that is when the exhaust fumes are the worst. So the more yeah. we can encourage <laughs> EVs. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay, well, I'll, I'll get back to you. Um, hopefully, hopefully they'll go for it. Um, I don't know if anybody knows anybody in particular over there or has any suggestions about who to approach, but... Um. <laughs> I'll see if I can find, uh, I'll find a name. I'll, I'll see if I can reach out and let you know, Lori. Okay, because I'm going to go through the initial process um, after I get the tax okay. ID and everything, and then we'll follow up from there. All right, thanks so much. Okay, okay Lori, thank you. Thank you, Lori. Thank you all for showing up. Yeah. Okay. We have to okay. Bye. Uh, all those There's in favor? I have a question. Uh, uh, I, oh, question. Yeah, I, I, I think that one or both of the Staberskis are on the board. Oh, at GSB? Oh. oh, okay. I'm not sure, but I think. Okay. I'll ask. <laughs> Good to know. Okay, thanks. Um, so I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfram. Okay, great. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you okay, thank, thank you. you. Energy Talk to Jeff Bezos, maybe. Uh, <laughs> thank you, folks. You know, charge Jeff Wolfram from time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Okay, thanks. We'll All talk right. more about this, Casey. Thank you, folks. Right. Thank I'll you. see you some other time. Bye. 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 I'm sending an Bye. email, Lori. Oh gosh, it looks oh, like I lost hearing. power on uh, at my house. Uh, oh, at your house too? Yeah. I don't see the hearing. Uh, okay. Oh, this um, is not a hearing. Okay. We have uh, a first right of um, a gory re request for first right of refusal, switching from 61A uh, by Joe Gory uh, for five Hillcrest Drive. Um, I think we need to read this to make it proper. Um, so I'll read it. Notice of intent not to exercise the option under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 61A. The Town of Deerfield has been duly notified in writing in accordance with the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 61A and 14 of the intention of Joseph W. Gorey, 5 Hillcrest Drive, to convert land that is currently valued assessed and taxed as the basis of its agricultural or horticultural use pursuant to said chapter 61A and that said land is properly described and deed recorded in the Franklin County Registry of Deeds in book 5635, page 96 as attached to this notice and is further notified on the, on the Deerfield Board of Assessors records as map 152, lot five. Please be advised that the town of Deerfield will not exercise its option to purchase said land for fair market value in accordance to General Laws Chapter 61A and 14, and thereby waives the 120 day period during which such an option may be exercised. In witness thereof, we, the underside board of selection of the town of Deerfield, Massachusetts, hereby set our hands and seals on the of the town this seventh day of October 2020. Um, so I think the best thing we can do um, is uh, take a motion on this, if this is in fact true. So, I can, and then just, just to clarify, so this property has been agricultural for a yeah. while. I think there's a house and some other property yeah. on it. And there's a house, a barn, and then there was a pasture. Okay. And so that's um, They used to raise sheep. Yeah. Uh, for the kids of uh, 4-H and stuff. Yeah, so. and so he's no longer going to no. use it as a farm. So that's yeah. what he's going to do is take it back out. What are, the, what are the requirements? Do you have to pay back tax and that kind of thing on it? Or? Um, they, they come to some kind of agreement with, with the assessors, assessors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. on back taxes. Yeah. It's not the full value, but... Right, um, right. Because we do have the right of the first refusal. Yeah, and, and the town sees no need mm -hmm. for that property, obviously, right? right. So I'll, I'll take a motion that we do, in fact, not I mean, exercise our option. Under Trevor motion. McDaniel, I'll make that that um, motion that we will not take a uh, will not exercise our option 
for first right of refusal. Dave Wolfram, second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. I totally know. Okay. You have to waive the 120 day wait as well. Okay. I couldn't get my the, mute button off. <laughs> that, in the, uh, that was in the. Um, I did notice. read the 120 day, but. We'll okay, I just want to make sure that it's in the, that you recognize that that is part of the signature yeah. that you're going to make. Correct, correct. Well, I'll just well, we'll make, just a make another motion. motion. Well, it, you read it. I did. Yeah. yeah. But just it's okay. Today, so I'll make a, make a second motion that, that uh, the town of Deerfield will waive its 120 day waiting period. We'll just make it combined. So this will be the yeah. correct one. So we will not exercise our option of first right of refusal. Okay. Um, and we will, and we are waiving the 120 day period. Yes. Mm -hmm. I guess I think that's clear now. Yes. We'll second David that. Second. Dave Wolfram, okay. second. All right. Now. All those in favor? Yes. All those I, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. Okay. So we need, we'll need to sign that. Okay. Uh, Casey, by the way this is written, do we have to sign it in front of Barb? Um, I don't. Like honestly, it is. I think she knows your signatures, and she doesn't typically attend the meeting. Okay. I just didn't know whether we... Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, I think if you're more comfortable with it, you could sign it in front of her, but. No, it's. She, I she know has she knows notarized my many of your signatures. Yeah, she knows my scribble. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, my daughters can't copy it, but she knows it. Is this the one to sign? No, uh, oh. I think we have this one in here. We have these okay. are all Other our signatures. Sign. Yeah. Okay. We have a half an hour before our. Um, Hearing. Next hearing. So, okay. um, and Phoebe will not be on until seven. She's yeah. on a, another meeting. Did you talk to her today? Uh, no. All right. I um, for a little bit. Okay. She knows that we're concerned about money. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Then uh, why don't we go down to our general announcements and um, board of health stuff? Okay. Well, um, did, was there any select board announcements that you well, had? One thing I just, and I'm sure you'll, I don't know if we've talked about it already, and we've had multiple meetings, but just the, the flu clinic was, I mean, Oh, oh that, well, that's meeting. the Board of Health. <laughs> I know. We'll do that in the Board of Health, but go ahead. No, no, no. I'll wait. No, I'll okay. Wait. So was there any select board thing? Um, I don't have anything, no. I, I talked with Dave Prickett today. Um, okay. So oh. he's, uh, I think by Monday or by Tuesday, 13th, we will have in Dropbox the um, either Friday or the third uh, or the 13th. We'll have in Dropbox the 50% design. We will have uh, three hard copies. I think three hard copies um, of the 50% design will be dropped off here or mailed here. Um, we're looking, he was going to, wanted to do a meeting like the week of the 19th, but I said, we've got a special town meeting, multiple hearings. I just said, let's wait until that after town meeting. And we would do a meet, um, you know, and, and it would be a kind of a morning long, um, yeah, let's do that. Full, you know, morning long meeting to just go over where we're at on those plans. And um, we should have the plans done and ready to go out to bid by end of year. And then we should really talk about phase two. Um, USDA has has really slimmed down their time frame. So before you had five years to do a project, now you have three, and it's not a lot of time to do to go from, you know, looking at an idea, you know, design, build, all in three years. It's it's really tight timeline, and. So we really need to have our ducks in a row on this and we need to get jumped up, jump on it. So okay. I think um, as soon as we can get this out of the way and bid documents out, then we can start on phase two and okay. get that going, uh, which is the aeration and, and the other items. Now, if there's an infrastructure bill that goes through Congress in this coming winter, mm -hmm. is there, how can we divide, I mean, is he gonna present it in a way that we could divide off some of this stuff? We'll just ask them. Okay, because I, I just very, I know. I in mean, my mind, be, yeah. yeah, I mean, the more money, the more grants that we can get, the more help. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, so that so I guess, so just if you want to leave that last week of October open, uh, uh, what I was going to do, what I told him is I would ask you tonight um, if there's any days that week are better uh, if you're working or if there's morning. I was hoping like we were thinking like in a morning, like a half day, probably a couple of hours, maybe two and a half hours. Today. I just didn't want to have it so short that we didn't get our answers, you know, and we just had time to really flush things out, think about it. I wanted to invite. Um, you know, Julie and Skip, but, you know, our working group back together again and really have a full-on meeting of what we're doing here for phase one. And the only, um, I'm, I'm on that uh, Mass Selectman Association nomination committee. Okay. So I have the entire day Friday um, booked. Okay. From 8 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon. Yep. But Any um, other days that would be good for you? But all other days like, it can happen. And we'll have we'll have Casey. Are you talking about the ninth or no? Uh, no, the October twentieth through the thirtieth. And if you're booked the thirtieth, um, we could do you know like a Tuesday or a Wednesday or whatever. Yeah, we could do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday by my calendar right now. Yeah. In the morning, I have a couple things in the afternoon, but yeah. on Tuesdays and Thursday or Tuesdays and Wednesday afternoon I got booked, but. But the mornings good. right now are open except for that Friday, which is so. I'll let them know, like either the Tuesday, the 27th, or when. What about you, Dave? Do you have anything those days? The 27th, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, the 28th, I'll be tied up first thing in the morning. So what? Uh, about uh, about nine, about nine o'clock in the morning, I should free up. Okay. So I'll I'll mention that we would do, you know, like the 27th would be our our, our request. And, if, and he was going to check with Tony, too, because his Tony's wife works nice as a nurse or whatever, so he's got kids. So um, so I'll say either the 27th or the 28th, but it'd have to be after 9 or, say, 10 o'clock, something like that. Yep. Or, okay. um, or, we could, or the 26th. Oh, no, the 26th doesn't work for you, though. Um, actually, the 26th. Let me see. I would feel better if we could do it in the, in the week. Fun? Yeah. Only because the week, you know, stuff gets filled up. It does. Yeah. So we do either the 26th. Yeah, the 26th in the morning I wouldn't be able to do. The oh. afternoon I would. Okay. Do the 26th p.m. or 27th morning. Any time, right? Yeah. Pretty much our morning. Is yeah. Good. How about the 29th? Um... No, I can't do anything on the 29th. Okay. okay. So we'll just do that. The yeah. 26th or the 27th morning. Uh, the 26th would be in the afternoon. Okay. After lunch. After lunch or something like that? Okay. Okay. That sounds like it would work. All right. And then we'll meet here. We'll get spaced out. We'll have plans. Um, we'll have a good week or so to look at those plans. They're going to be here and all the documentation. So. You know, so that's a good idea because maybe we can discuss it on our meeting on the 21st. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, it would be helpful to go over them together. Yep. Would that be sure. all right? Yes. Just for a few Fine. minutes. Maybe, um, you, Casey, can you schedule the um, our selections meeting for like 15 or 20 minutes before 6 on the 21st so that we could look at any drawings? Casey? Keep in mind the 21st is also the hearing for the marijuana, and you already have yeah hold on i mean i would be very cautious about doing something on the 21st because i think you're going to want to be in that hearing um oh no this is our select board this is our right select board the, meeting. The, but the 21st at seven o'clock is when the marijuana hearing is don't oh, you want to okay. be there yep oh yeah yeah but I'm, I'm thinking that we if we met like at quarter six i mean if you posted us for quarter six or something trevor could go over the drawings with us Okay, so you want me to post you for 545? Yes. Um, hold on just one sec. I want to see what else is on that agenda. Um, all right, so Chris Curtis has his land conservation plan and flood evacuation plan. So you think we'd have enough time if I post you for 545? Yeah, we just want to look at, I, I would just like to look at it together. That's okay. All right. And, and, uh, and 
And because of open meeting law, if we're together discussing it, we have to post it. Right. I just I just wanted to let you know that he had asked to be on that agenda. And oh, that, no, that marijuana was going to be that night, too. And I thought you might want to attend that hearing. So yeah, I'm trying and, to keep and, things a little more compressed. And I probably won't have a lot of info on the 21st, but it'll just give us just, time to look it over. Look at it. And then and then we'll have. No, uh, no, a I'm not meeting. disagreeing, Carolyn. Yeah. I'm just letting you know what's okay. on the agenda and okay. why I was trying to structure it a certain way. All right, All I'll right. put yeah. you on as the first appearance, Trevor, at five, and I'll start the okay. meeting at 5:45. Okay. Okay. Good. We just want to look at the map yep. together. Yep. Okay. I, I just feel like we. And we'll have it uh, PDF too, so we can put it on the big board. Yeah. What am I, I calling it, Trevor? Uh, it's just maybe a review of 50% uh, design. Okay. Initial, initial review of 50% no, design. No, no discussion. Just. Yeah, just the review. Just to look at it. Okay. And then we'll have a bigger review. And then so if you could, and then I'll I'll get with uh, Dave. And uh, Tony, and see what days work, and then reach out to Skip and uh, Dooley and all, and just see, you know, try to find time that either the 26th or the 27th for a for a like a half day meeting. I say okay. half day, but it's probably going to be a couple hours. Okay, done. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so now, so then, now we can go on to the board of health issues. Um, COVID update, Halloween, trick-or-treating, and yeah. our EDS drill. Right. The EDS, the EDS was amazing, and I'll let you speak because you were a champion. I want to thank you a lot. I say that, I don't want to embarrass you, but I just want to say that we are very lucky as a town and a community to have Carolyn Ness leading us with that EDS drill. She worked for months. Yay. And Lisa White. Um, and all the other people who got involved in help, but really um, to have her leadership to pull us all together, all the towns, her project together, and to lay out, um, get all new, a bunch of volunteers, a bunch of older volunteers that have done it before, and to lay out that plan for both the senior center, um, which was a great success. They, 250 something people went through that line. Um, and then we learned, you know, they learned from that line. And then we had four lanes to the highway garage, which I thought was fantastic. That was such a great program. And, and to have the, the, the lanes there so people could come in safely. We had tables on both sides. Um, there was just enough room to get people into registration, triage, and then vaccination. And then out they went. And, uh, and the police did an amazing job of lining people up you know dave was there greeting people all the way through um you know just getting people with their forms and making sure all that was ready and i just was just thoroughly impressed about your leadership and, and how that all went that went really well and we've got good ideas for changes to speed things up because i know we will apologize some people it's a long time to get through <laughs> I um others uh zip right through so we um, we're just looking at ways to kind of speed that up for people too and you know, a lot of it nowadays is because you know we have to get reimbursement. Um, a lot of other years, uh, the state paid for the flu uh, shots. So this year, we had to make sure that we got reimbursement to the town for all those flu shots. So it just creates a lot more paperwork. But um, so thank you again. Great oh, job. You're, you're really welcome. I, I have to say, at quarter of nine on Saturday night, looking for those GD. Copiers all over, <laughs> driving over. Right, that's right. Almost, One of the copiers the, crashed. So who would have thought? So that we needed some copiers. Carolyn went out to store after store after store to find uh, to find copiers that we could use to copy every nice card. Just threw them in the highway garage Saturday night, and thankfully Trevor came and set them up. Yeah, you know, we had help, uh, other help to do that. So we could have four lanes and two, instead of two lanes, because we did learn a lot at the senior center. Two lanes was just not enough. And um, the paperwork, we were not good on the paperwork. We honestly, Jen Bartek the, and, and Triad and uh, the Senior Center really did a wonderful job signing up people. We had 135 people signed up. And uh, we said, okay, we have enough, just barely enough high dose and we'll yeah. be fine. But we had an additional 120 people come yeah. and that were not signed up and we, and truly, we had one copier going. It was, you know, not, it was slow. Yeah. It was a lot slower than we should have been. So anyway, we learned a lot. Fred was wonderful and, yeah, and, and organized job. us. Yeah. And um, 
So, and Dave was there, he, was, he switched out the copiers, another copier rescue. Um, <laughs> because we did, we, we've always had free vaccine in the past and not having free vaccine really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. um, but people were wonderful, it still went fine and, and, and it really wasn't that long a wait. And uh, so we overcompensated, the, you know, on Sunday we had beautiful weather and um, the highway garage just really did work out really well. Uh, but we had everybody working the line, Dave, Trevor, all the boards of health that were participating, worked the lines and we've got the paperwork all organized. And we, what we should have done inside was collect the registration station, move, the, move them to triage, and then take the triage people that were capable of vaccinating, vaccinate so that we could be a little bit faster, which mm -hmm. we'll do next time. Yep. We also had a lot of singles in cars at the senior center, so we anticipated that, but we didn't anticipate um, so many families. We got a lot, a lot of families on um, and we, so ultimately we did 647 individuals in our communities and they're now protected and we, and we practice, we truly practice what we're gonna do when we have COVID vaccine. So it was very, very exciting. And um, I'm, I'm thrilled to death that it went so well. Yes, and it's great. And we had a great team of uh, new and returning volunteers that were able to do it and um, it, it just was wonderful, even though we couldn't socialize as we normally do. It still felt really like a wonderful community event. And I, you know, thank you both for really participating. Sure. And as well as the other communities. And we, we, the police made sure we had safe. The highway garage cleaned everything, uh, crew cleaned everything out. So we had this, our wonderful new highway garage. So I, I think it will be really good whenever we find out about the COVID. We, won't have to do the insurance reimbursement, but we'll, we'll have to do, I heard on the DPH call, we'll have to enter it into the system, the MISS, MIIS system um, within 24 hours. So this is gonna be a little bit hard for us. Well, um, yeah, there, you know, there were questions and, and I don't know if I gave wrong information. So a lot, of, there were, um, People couldn't get a form that their that their son was vaccinated, or daughter, or child was vac vaccinated for the schools. I was under the impression that information went into a system and then it does. Oh, it does. The within, what happens is it goes into the system within seven to ten days. We put it in, and so your primary care doctor or the school nurse can access it as proof that you have. Okay, because I was telling people that anybody. that information, yeah. they, and other people were commenting, I think, on Facebook, but that 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 wasn't accurate, and I could have swore it was. So yeah, okay. no, that is just, accurate. Just to make sure, it's just for the COVID vaccine. We're supposed to. What we're hearing is just, we need to put it into the system within within 24 hours. Well, which for us is like really, really fast. I mean, we're very efficient. Yeah. But this is this is a whole. That's taking all your paperwork that has the information of what lot and shop mm -hmm. you had, and then who all your information into this into this database, state database, and well, you know, um, it's quite it's quite a lot. Stevie Walker is is the only Western Mass person that has is on that council. Yeah. For this early vaccine information from yes, the state, they're meeting tonight. They're meeting tonight. Yes. When she gets on at seven, we can kind of we'll be the first ones to kind of uh, find out yeah. any information she has on that. Hopefully, you know, and I'm sure there'll be more meetings, and she probably yeah. not have a lot of information right now. But but at least we have somebody in Western Mass at least on the um, on that committee. So. Uh, uh, but I want to thank both of you for being so supportive. It oh, you're welcome. Really, no, great, really good. Good job. Um, uh, it was wonderful to have the, all the um, volunteers that we did. Oh, volunteers were wonderful. Um, so one of the other things that we need to talk about is um, trick or treating. Yeah. Mm. Um, there's a few towns that have banned trick or treating, like Burniston. Um, people are definitely definitely discouraging it because it's high risk. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's high risk is because I know as a mother, if I lived out of town in another town, I would feel so comfortable coming to South Deerfield and dropping my kids off at 
King Philip or Kelleher or Captain Lather or North Main Street, any of these neighborhoods are safe. Um, so you're mixing a lot of kids together in a very, even the south side. So I think uh, I think it can be done if if the parents are um, are very vigilant, you know, and, and you know. So if you want to partake, obviously you have your light on like everybody else does. But it's not a big bowl of candy this year. It's individual bags that you have set out, spaced out or you have it a way that you can, you know, I've heard some people using PVC pipes to kind of set the candy down, down through pipe, so at yeah. a distance, or there's um, individual wrap goodie bags for the kids. It's not everybody sticks their hands in there and you're not right up next to the kids. If you leave something out, maybe you can manage that table as the kids aren't there, you can replenish, and, and then families that come to the, come to the uh, stairs or to the steps, you know, they have to be careful and let, you know, let one child go at a time. So it's not a whole group of kids up to the count, up to the door like it normally is, but they can be spatially distanced out on the front lawn, out on the street, one at a time goes up, gets their candy and comes back. I think it can be done safely. I mean, people will be wearing masks um, for sure. Yeah. Um, well, they're going to have to wear this style mask under underneath the other mask. Absolutely. Right. They have because to be careful. The regular, they have to be, the, Halloween masks are not a barrier. And they need to be doing hand sanitizer and, and don't eat your candy while you're out. Make sure you take it home and maybe just leave it for a day or so. Let you know, let it sit. Um, you don't have to, you know, dig right in. Maybe you can have your own candy that you have safe at home if the child wants it on that day and then just leave that candy for a little bit um, on the safe side. So I think there's steps that people can take. They have to be responsible. And our, our community has been. They've done a very good job of of following the rules and, and doing what we can to keep this this um, this rate down because we need to keep our schools open so parents can work and the schools are doing a very good job right now. It is stressful, but but the kids are so happy to be back at school. Trevor. We do not want to jump. So Anna Lee yeah. would like to speak, Trevor. Oh sure, yeah, I can go on for a while. So go ahead, Anna Lee. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I don't know that the, I have an answer to the question I posed, but all of us have seen recently or, you know, often bemoan, we're not just looking at the first and second graders, we're looking at the middle school and high schoolers who still come, who aren't coming with parents, who aren't, you know, being careful, who are in groups. And I think that it's nice to say that, you know, Residents can be careful with passing out the candy, but that doesn't necessarily mean that as Carolyn was starting to say people from other towns or, you know, larger groups are necessarily being careful. So I don't know where that takes us, but it's not just. Yeah, like I'm under the impression that all the children that are out trick or treating, no matter what age group they're in, should be escorted mm -hmm. because, you know, When I was that age, I couldn't be trusted. <laughs> well, so, you know, it's just, um, so it's not just dropping them off and say, here, go trick or treating and then come pick, pick them up in an hour. Um, but then again, I also used to trick or treat with a shot glass, but that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're not encouraging that. No, we're not. <laughs> just monitor that. Yeah. Um, I just, I just want people to be aware that, you know, hopefully we're not making a choice between trick-or-treating and closing down school. Right, I mean, exactly. We, we have to be careful. And my concern is, is that, I mean, I look at our, our town as a very desirable town, a safe town for other people to come and trick-or-treat here. And I, our, our police keep it safe and our residents are wonderful and hand out good candy and, you know, we have a good reputation for that. So um, I'm just a little concerned, but I think if we put out guidelines, maybe if we put out guidelines mm -hmm. and yeah. really encourage people, I, I, I have to say to the older teenagers that are in our town, um, it, obviously if older teenagers come from other towns, there's nothing you can do, but um, 
you know, we want you to stay in school. We want you to have interaction at school, and mm -hmm. we don't want you to make bad choices um, for Halloween. It's a blue moon. It's a Saturday Halloween. It's an awful Halloween to give up. Um, I absolutely understand. So, um, and just, you know, the parties. We just really yeah, want to no, discourage no parties, parties and stuff like that. No, no, no bunch of kids dunking right. for apples. You can watch yeah. it on the peanuts. That's about um, it. We have been so good, and they're really, I mean, our our risk factor is very, very low, mm -hmm. and we're monitoring every single day, and we're just trying to keep people really safe, and I just, um, we don't want to blow it. Nope. So nope. please yes. try to be yes. responsible. I guess what we should do, um, you know, the CDC did come out with some guidelines of what's high risk and what's low, you know, yeah, so we can research that, put that Maybe out. we'll put that on our web page, and um, people can go to the web page and try and to the, sort that out. And they've already they they have canceled the the hay ride this year. I know the police and the fire department and the yeah. farmers that usually do that that because that's obviously close contact for a good period of time, and it's just not not smart to do. But um, so be be responsible and be safe, and you know. And we'll try to put some guidelines on. Lost out on a lot this year. It'd be nice if they could, you know, enjoy a, a day. And it will be different than most other years. But please, just please be safe. Um, another thing I just wanted to mention that I, I I'm getting messages. A lot of people are are without power right now. Yeah. Because yeah. Our house is without power. Yeah. Yours too. Um, there was a tree across the sidewalk. I think on Sugarloaf. Um, near Snowberry Lane. So th it was quite a storm that came through, you know, just before we started. I'm just finally drying out. But um, just be careful out there. With, there may be down power lines. And, um, and just so just be safe as we start getting dark here. But I know our crews will be out. I'm sure Kevin's probably out already. And um, the police will be out to make sure people are safe. But I know. I'm, I'm getting alert messages that there is issues. So yeah, I'm sure it's going to be widespread. Yeah. Yep. And just for a point of interest, if people are really interested in history, uh, I have direct lineage to a gentleman called Cotton Mother from Salem. So, oh. um, oh, Salem. we can kind of figure out how they handled Halloween. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> True. For people that misbehaved. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, your, your relatives burned my relatives. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. <laughs> Um, but I think people have got the idea that we're a little bit hesitant. Um, that doesn't mean that um, we don't want this to happen, though. So yeah. please, please, really, it's spread by droplets, the majority of stuff. So yes. please remember, mask, this kind of mask under your, a mask under your mask. And stay distant. Please set things out if you're going to have kids uh -huh. set it out, spread out. You know, come, there'll be all kinds of contractions. I'm sure, you know, we're, we're pretty People inventive. People have suggested clothes lines. Clothes lines, you know. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I mean, you can still see the kids from afar, and um, it's an exciting time of the year. So hopefully it's nice weather and people are safe and um, and kids can, can finally enjoy a, a day doing that. Uh, but use hand sanitizer and wear a mask. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, was there anything else you wanted to talk about? There was uh, some policies that Casey wanted us to talk about. Um, public records access Carolyn? policy. We've got yeah. the hearing in a, about a minute. Yeah, oh, you have the hearing. Oh, yeah. I, um, oh you're and right. You've been yeah. joined by Lori. Um, Lori? Yes. Hi, you? Lori. I'm sorry. I was um, looking at the um, clock and I was thinking 6:30 instead of 6:15. Yeah, it's PD at 6 Great. Okay, let me just read this now. It is 615. In accordance with the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 138, the Select Board, acting as the local licensing authority for the town of Deerfield, hereby provides notice that they will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, October 7, 2020, at 615 p.m., in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. 01373, on the application of Historic Deerfield, Inc., Deerfield N., for the change of manager of the all-alcohol restaurant on-premise liquor license 
number 00009HT0276. The premises is located at 84B Old Main Street, Deerfield, Mass. 01342. Okay, we have to say that this is available at, on the Zoom. Its meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 570012. You can call in at 312-626-6700. Um, Six seven nine nine or two uh, oh, excuse me nine two nine two oh five six zero nine nine okay thank you oh and the meeting ID um, again is nine one one six zero four one five eight zero okay Lori welcome welcome hi everyone hello hi Lori. Tell us about what you're doing. So, yeah, uh, last September I took over as the innkeeper at the Deerfield Inn, um, which means that I oversee the inn, the restaurant, um, so all areas of the inn. So with that, the change of would be natural for me to take over the liquor license at this time or have the manager name change at this time. Right. Um, the one thing that we always ask is, um, you've had tips training, Lori. I'm pretty sure you have, based on yeah. uh, your previous interviews here for Ch uh, Chandler's. Yeah, so I've been uh, tip certified multiple times. So when I was the GM of Chandler's, it was the same scenario. I was the GM for 17 years there. And when I took over at the end, I took the course again as a refresher and um, certified for the next three years. Right. Perfect. Sounds great. Dave, did you have any questions? No. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a wonderful establishment and Love it. Great, 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 great. run quite well yeah. and have enjoyed it when I've been there. So um it's uh yeah, I it's well run. So yeah, very well run. We can enjoy it every time I've been there. Everybody does their space and um it's yeah, great establishment, good leadership. Okay, okay then you. I will entertain a motion to close the hearing. I make a motion to close the hearing. And Dave Wolfram, second. Um, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, um, I will entertain a motion to um, approve this change in um, management. Make a motion to approve the change in uh, manage management and um, Hold of the liquor license for um, historic Deerfield Deerfield Inn to uh, Lori McDonald. I'll second. Dave Wolfram, second. Okay, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Neff. Thank you for waiting. Yeah. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> Thank you. I look forward to seeing you all at the end and at Champney soon. Yeah, I okay. sure will. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Have a nice night. Thank you. Bob, is everything okay? Well, we are the roof got hurt off. Oh, no. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, the wind came through. in the empty lot. Nobody got hurt. Oh, thank goodness. The whole thing. The whole roof of the building. Well, since you're out here too much, we're barely nailing up and nailing and sticking out on that farm. Oh, boy. Is it the main building or the, the lumber? The barn. The barn. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm sure so there's probably some other things around town. I'm sure there's a few. Yeah, around. Okay, thank you, Bob. Okay, great. Thank you, Bob, for coming in. I really appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, he is. He's in the office there. Yep, he's already. Thank you, Bob, for coming in. Um, that was Bob uh, Walden, our building commissioner, who is. Um, Reviewing property in town that may have been injured, uh, you know, mm -hmm. damaged in the storm. We are very lucky to have wonderful employees that come in after hours. For come in like after that. hours yeah. and do these kind of things. Yeah. Um, okay, we have um, a public access, pu public records access policy. Um, I think we have to. It's not really anything changed. It's just that we have to update it periodically, don't we? 
I'm not sure on that one. Probably, Casey is, oh, she's, she's probably talking, talking about. Her. Do you um, want to do the um, CARES Act stipend? Diversion yes, let's diversion. do the CARES Act stipend, and then we can come back to this. I, I just want to verify if there's no change on the public access policy. Um, and we have poll workers to do, so. Yeah, so um, I think. Um, the CARES Act, that's to do with TV, isn't it? Uh, no, uh, well, the CARES Act, um, we will be for services? talking to TV about the CARES Act. Yeah, that's a different, a different subject. Um, um, so, do you want me to read this memorandum? For the, the yeah, why don't, yeah, why don't okay. you go ahead and read it? Because, so, um, because of COVID, there, there is a, uh, I'll, I'll get into this in a second. So, uh, because of COVID, there is a, an immense amount of work that has that has really taken a ton of time from our administrative team. Um, so as we're going to need a bit of help. So this is this is kind of relating to that. And uh, they're looking to hire a couple of people with stipends. Um, as you know, there's a significant uptick in the workload directly related to COVID-19 pandemic. Training and tasks related to remote participation, especially monitoring the many meetings held by town committees have increased staff workload tremendously. Thankfully, the town has received grants grant funds to support unanticipated expenses, the fund tracking and reporting requirements are also significant. The, uh, the assistant town administrator and I have, this is Casey, and I have been, have determined that additional help is needed to cope with the increased workload. Specifically, we would like the select board to approve stipends for a person to assist monitoring the many Zoom meetings we manage and a person to assist us with grant reporting requirements for the FEMA uh, DR4496 disaster and the CARES Act. The CARES Act allows for hiring of individuals to assist with activities related to the pandemic, reporting it, and such. Um, Alex uh, Hershender is a student uh, that has been active in town government and assisted prior town administrators in Deerfield here in various capacities as part of his coursework as a graduate for his graduate degree. Um, through an internship in his department, he would be able to assist with management, monitoring of various, various committee meetings as assigned by the assistant town administrator. Respectfully, I request the select board to approve the hire of Ms. Mr. Hershander, on a temporary basis uh, for the purpose of assisting with remote participation activities that would otherwise not be necessary if the pandemic had not impacted operations. I re recommend payment uh, to Mr. Hershander uh, of, of a stipend of uh, 2,500. Uh, George Sheffin is a retired computer engineer and current Ashfield Emergency Management Director in Ashfield with experience um, with the FEMA disaster relief protocols. His assistance with the complex reporting requirements for the disaster relief funds would be extremely helpful. I uh, respectfully request the select board uh, approve uh, the hire of Mr. Stephan on a temporary basis for purposes of providing technical assistance. This assistance not normally being necessary except through the unusual circumstances presented by uh, presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. I re recommend payment of a stipend to Mr. Stephan of 2,500. So this is money that we would, um, that we have received through the, uh, through the CARES Act grant. And um, it allows us to hire supplemental help to, to manage, manage this amount of work. Um, I can just say that um, Casey and Jen have been working tirelessly and there's multiple meetings, you know, and, and sometimes at, four times a week and, and at the same time. Um, and they, they go, you know, our meetings, as you know, the ZBAs can go on late into the night and, uh, and then they're here bright eyed and bushy tail that, you know, in the morning to get to work and it's exhausting. So to have that extra help, um, to kind of share the load of that, of that work would be very important. And I, I fully support that for sure. And then, the, you know, anytime you get money from the state for grants, the, re the requirements for reporting are immense, and especially with this one, um, just a lot that needs to get done. And so that extra help, you know, the issue is that, yes, we have people to do that work, but then they can't do anything else. And we have a town to run. We have so much other stuff that's, that's going on at the time. Um, you know, just our normal day-to-day -day business, um, COVID-19 has really sucked up all of the energy 
and all the effort in town and and, and every town. So it's um, I think it's very important to um, to get this little bit of help here. I agree. You know, Alex has been very involved with the town government for a while now. Um, you know, uh, George Stephan, I don't know, but um, I know uh, Casey speaks very highly of him. Yep. And um, you know, I agree that you know we need the added support in there. And, um, and the stipend is just a, you know, it's covered by the CARES, it's covered by the CARES grant, so, you know, yeah. um, we can take advantage of it. Yeah. I, I feel like it's a good expenditure of money because we're burning out our town staff. We are. I mean, we are. Casey works all the weekends. Yeah. Um, Jen and Casey are... Okay, to be fair, not all the weekends, but I do work long days, and so does Jennifer. <laughs> I know you're on here on sat Saturdays and Sundays. I can't yeah, I see mine, and, yeah. And I have to yeah. respond, so I know you're in here. Yeah. And you're here till even when there's not a meeting, you're here till 6 o'clock. And so, it's, you know, 10-hour days is an early day. I know. And then some of the days are 14 hours or 15 hours even. And, uh, you know, yeah. you, you can't do that four nights. Four nights you a week. Take your time or else you um, get so out. even if Alex can only do this two nights a week, at least it's two nights a week, maybe you can get out of here between five and six. Yeah. And so that and was um, one of the reasons that Jennifer and I were talking about it is it would give us at least one night a week would give us a little bit of relief because, you know, last week or this week, I've already had three Zoom meetings at night. Yeah. Uh, right. Last week I, I had four, and Jennifer does, the, she does a majority of them, but we split them. You know, like tonight yeah. I'm doing the select board meeting. Um, yeah. So we try to split that workload, but it is getting overwhelming. And, and you have to have a monitor. It's not like you can just set one of these zooms up and go. You need a monitor because it's, you know, as we have seen, you can have really awful people come into your meeting and just spam it with all kinds of really awful things. So you, there needs to always be somebody there attentive and watching and understanding, you know, who's in the meeting and who's not and, and letting right. people speak and watching people raise their hands. And it's not just, just simply turn it on and walk away. There's a lot of work that goes into it and, it, and it's, it's tiresome. So um, I, I fully support this. Mm. So I'd make a motion to support um, both of these hires. I'll second that. Dave Wolfram. Um, okay. Is there any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, Casey, for organizing this. Um, thank you very your... much. We both appreciate it, and we hope it'll be helpful as we move forward, because it doesn't seem like COVID's going away any soon, anytime soon. Casey, on the, uh, on the memorandum, if you could, I don't know, you may, I may have an old one here, because um, it, it says to um, Robert Walden, the building commissioner, but I think that was because you already read another one. It's memo. because <laughs> I reuse my memos. <laughs> <laughs> I can change that, but yes, I reuse my memos. <laughs> I know you do. That's fine. That's good. So we should have a template. So. I'll so fix it. Also, Casey. Okay. Yeah. Also, Casey, we just had a question on um, the public access pro uh, policy, the public rec records access policy. Okay. This is just a renewal. What's changed on this? This is just a renewal, right? It's it it's something? nothing. Not much has changed, and you can certainly view this as a first read copy. Um, but yeah. basically it's confirming the protocols that we take as to respond to public records requests. I can't remember so, the effective date of the law change. I'd have to, rem I'd have to look it up, but yeah, it's, it's reinforcing the process. Okay. Um, I'm fine with it. I read through this. I didn't see that there really was any, or I didn't feel like there was any real changes to it. Do you remember what was changed, Casey? I don't remember. Well, I had to. I have to put in the um, effective date of the records, the public right. records law change, which I think was in 2016. Um, but nothing has significantly changed because we're basically using the law as our guide. Okay. Um, so I feel comfortable. I feel comfortable voting this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question I have for you, Casey, is the. Uh, um, category of uh, records it says regional school records are generally maintained by Mohawk Trail Regional School mm -hmm. District. 
Where did you oh, do that? Because he caught my mistake. See, I you reuse my documents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so right. I can change you... that. Thank you for catching that, David. Okay. I was just curious. How Maybe this. No. On the second page. I know. I'm looking at it. Mm. Where was it? These things escape me, Carolyn, and I've read it five times. That's why we have multiple I, eyes. Yeah, that's exactly. Why that's why we have multiple eyes. See? See, it's dangerous when we actually read this stuff, like not like our commander in chief. Right. I feel like. Um, where is it? Where? I feel like no, but that's good for me to know because I don't always catch my own mistakes if I read it too much. Oh, I don't even have that part. No, no wonder. I don't think I have it either. You didn't give her that page, so she couldn't find it. Right. No wonder. Okay. Okay. I'll get it. Well. Um. I can fix it right now. In fact, I'm in the document right now. Did you did you read the part that I didn't? Yep. Yeah, that I didn't read. Uh, no, I meant you feel yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, no, I if you guys aren't comfortable, that's fine. We can put it on for another, we can put it on the next meeting. It's fine. No, I, I think we need to vote it. I, I didn't see anything that was changing in the part that I did read. So um, I'm okay with it, Casey. I have to change the 7 through 12, too, which I'm doing right now. All right. Oh, yep. I'll take a motion. Okay, so I fixed those two mistakes. And I just need to pull the date up. So if you do approve it, I'll just change the date, the effective okay. date of the records, the public records law change, the statutory okay. change. I think it's important to get it done. Yeah, I'll make, I'll make a motion to approve the update to the public records access policy of the town of Deerfield. Dave Wolfram, second. Um, is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. Thank um, you. You? Uh, the surplus property policy. I don't I, have I it. No yeah, Kevin hadn't, there was one thing that Kevin wanted to correct and he didn't give it back to me. So right. <laughs> I mentally okay. put a little line through that in my, in my head. <laughs> okay, we can do that in a couple of weeks then. Yep. Is Phoebe on yet? Not yet, no. not until last uh, month. Oh, it moved yeah. from 6.30 to 7? Yeah. Oh, yep. Okay. Yep. She's in another meeting. So. Okay. Um, Casey, is there anything on the reopening plans that you wanted to update us on? So after the phone call, um, the South County Senior Center BOO meeting on Monday, um, I want to update the restroom protocol or the, clean, the restroom cleaning protocol. It really wouldn't apply until after we open more completely but because we're coming up on early voting i want to make sure that that's clarified and so i meant to get this out to you i had changed that section at, literally as i was in the meeting on monday i was changing that section because i was providing some information to christina and so that portion of the document the only thing i haven't done is given it so you haven't seen it it's basically one extra bullet point and I was going to give it to Dick to look at because nothing else has changed. Uh, what I did was right. I pulled apart my document and sent Christina something that she could start her own reopening plan with. And after the conversation, they were talking about the restrooms at the senior center, how they would handle it. So my thought was, is create a bullet point that addresses it individually and says, the restrooms will be cleaned intermittently during the day using spray and or wipe cleaners that are um, approved spray and or wipe cleaners okay. with the increased right. traffic load. Um, and what right. I was wondering is, is I was going to have Dick look at it. That's the only change at this point because I didn't think that the select board was comfortable making a change to how we're operating at this moment. Is that the case? Right. No, right. I think no. Right I now. think we're good right now. Um, I, so if you want to give me a few time. minutes, I'll print it out for you. Because it's okay. done. I just didn't print it for you because I I was kind of busy today. <laughs> I I have been um, trying to uh, reach out to the state to get some guidance under the new CDC um, regu uh, guidelines that came out on aerosol in uh, poorly ventilated buildings. 
you know, based on our senior center. And um, Phoebe does have some info for you. Oh, she does. I think so. Okay. okay. Um, I haven't I haven't been able to get anybody on the state to really commit to helping us. So right. So that she had some info. I forget what she said, but she. Yeah, I, I had asked Phoebe to do some research on it because we weren't. We're not being very successful on the state level. There, no one wants to commit to opening yep. up or even adjusting anything. So, um, okay, moving Okay, on. so give me uh, two minutes. I just printed this for you and you can take a look at it. That's the only change and it's actually highlighted. There may be something that we have to change in the, in the um, where was it? Not the employee form, but the town policy on leave that Kate brought to my attention, but she and I haven't been able to circle back around to that particular detail. So if Kate and I have that detail um, fleshed out in time for your next meeting, we may ask you to address that. Okay. All right. So give me one sec. I'm going to run to the copier. Want to do the election? Yes, that's the next thing I was oh, going to do. Um, election warrant and appointment of new poll workers. Author rate, uh, uh, oh, okay, let's oh, see that. And I wanted to speak to that a little bit. Okay, why don't you go ahead. Um, so I, I spoke to Barb today, and I, I know Barb talked to Casey as well. Um, just to let the public know that um, very, very few uh, uh, ballots have come in. Uh, so we, we, they need to be in by Friday from State law. So we've been waiting. Some towns are they're trickling in, but um, so just hold tight. If you haven't seen your ballot yet, uh, we haven't received them all yet, or many of them at all. So um, we believe over this week we'll have them, and then I think the week of uh, Columbus Day week is when people should start seeing them arrive in their mailbox. Um, just want to let people know if they're anxious. I know they've been calling. You know, is, is my ballot in yet? You know, where's my ballot? we haven't received them all from the state or, or many from the state at all so we should start seeing those really quick at the end of this week um and uh and you know i know barb is ready to to get those out she has help ready to go so uh there's a lot of kits to put together and get them, get them out to everybody but just so you know that that um i just want to make make people aware that um that they are coming and uh, as soon as we have them uh, i know that barb barb barbara hancock is all ready to go with uh, getting those out to you. So hopefully you'll see those shortly. And we have a list of uh, poll workers here to approve. Yeah, do you want to read sure, that? Sure, I can read that. Uh, we have a selection of the town of Deerfield by virtue of the authority vested in us uh, by the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to hereby appoint the following poll workers for the term beginning October 7th, 2020 and ending December 31st, 2020. And I may, I may not be great with all these names, so I'll try. Um, Vanessa uh, Gessick, Gess, uh, Gess, Gess? Geist. Geist, thank you. Vanessa Geist, um, David Grace, Charlotte uh, Griffiths, Jennifer Haley, Francesca Henson uh, DeBello, Janet McKenney Lowry, Thomas Lyons, David Manning, James Merlin. Uh, Brian uh, Pico, Julia uh, Revolino Lyons, Jennifer Rosie, Jennifer Thomas Adam, Kathy Weston, and Cheryl Risley. So make a motion to appoint those. Uh, Dave Walton, second. Um, is there any further discussion? No, thank you so much for willing to serve. I, uh, I was just going to say thank you so very much. Um, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. okay, we'll get that done. Um, just to review, go back one step. Uh, Casey's alteration um, reads, restrooms should be cleaned, disinfected several times per day once visitors are allowed into the municipal offices for extended periods of time more than 15 minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to basically say that in all the opening of the other buildings, yeah. you know, when we go to open. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. 
I don't think that's any issues, but it was good to respond. Then there was the authorization to sign Center of Tech Senior Life Grant. Um, this is a one to Barbara. Do you want to just explain this, Casey, a little bit? It's actually a private uh, company that offered these grants um, to the town clerks in the area. And I believe the COG were some, I don't know if it was Phoebe at the COG, it might have been, that alerted everybody to the grant. And it was $5,000 that Barbara applied for and received. And her plan, you guys need to sign the grant paperwork. Um, yeah. Her plan is to order a couple of electronic poll devices and the yeah. a, attachment uh, peripherals that she might need because it could be very helpful to facilitate as she's going through the voting process. Um, and so that's what she indicated to me. If she, she's also planning on using whatever's left over from that purchase, which I think is right around 3000 to augment her supplies for separators to separate areas where people can walk and can't walk when you walk in to vote the the strings and posts i can't remember what the heck they're called but um, yeah yes Very so exciting. basically for for supplies that assist with the election process which is what the grant's designed to do yeah whiteboards and different things um, um don't forget to um let barbara know that some of our um signs that we use for our EDS that we've gotten over the years from EDS uh, grant funding is available for Barbara. Like, yeah. you know, social distancing, masks, they're on self-contained, um, you know, stands right. that are very okay. easy to use. Okay. Yeah. So use yeah. Um, I will yeah, have Jennifer somewhere. remind her tomorrow. And those okay. devices uh, she talked to me about, those look, they, they sound great because what you, you know, instead of doing the paper everything's done uh it's almost like an ipad yeah. and um so they'll not only check in and check out really easily but you can run reports off them really easily oh perfect so it's going to be it's going to be really great for okay. her um, yeah casey, she's just ordering the printer to go with them yeah exactly yep printer. casey just tell barbara that um i'll return the church key tomorrow i just got to go over and finish the last couple things with the um some of the supplies that we brought back, you know, the highway department brought back, brought back over. Oh, thank God. <laughs> they asked me and I didn't know and I forgot to ask the other day. No, I, I, still, I know I still have the key. But um, one of the things I wanted to bring up on that was that um, if we have any um, excess CARES funding, um, I would like to see if we could fix up the stairs on the church both the front and the back, the stairs are, are yeah. getting really soft, you know, spongy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they need to be fixed. So I realized we're really that using, today. Yeah, yeah, well, they we're using that all the time for storage now uh, for all our EDS stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll be using it for our COVID-19 distributors. So I feel like it would certainly fit under the grant funding. And some shelving. And it would be nice to have some shelving. There's you know, a lot of shelving around that. It, it, you know, Dick walked me through there, Carolyn. There's a lot of shelving mm -hmm. hidden in various places in the addition to the right. church. Right. Yes. Let's will, hold it. But basically, it it's enhanced storage mm -hmm. for, related to COVID-19. So if we can get this done under the grant money, I think we certainly should. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring that up. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, anyway, so I'll take a motion to accept this funding. Yes, I'll happily make that motion to accept the funding. For the grant. Dave Wolfram, second. Um, all those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Nash. Fine. Um, did this? Do you have the documents to sign in the signature yes. folder? We're gonna, okay. We're gonna just we're gonna just do it all. Sign at every once. yeah. Sign everything at the end. Uh, yeah, because we're getting down here, and I think um, we have the uh, election warrant too. Yeah, we have the election warrant and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, the next thing on the item is the contract for Berkshire Design. Yes. The town Common. You want to do this election one though? Um, yeah, it's all here. We can. Oh, but do you have to take a separate vote for it? You probably uh, should just just to be safe. This one, the, the state. The, the, the state ballot. Election. Okay. Yeah, yeah the motion to accept. You should probably do a vote for the state ballot. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, then let's go back and um, make a motion for the state ballot. We'll make a motion to approve the um, state ballot for uh, 2020 state elections and, and government elections. I thought we already did For that. President, Thomas, you know, Senator, uh, State Rep, Counselor, Senator in General Court, Representative in General Court, Register of Probate, Franklin Council uh, of Government. And then obviously, the, I think there are two, there are four questions. That's the two four non binding. Questions. Four questions and two binding, two non-binding. And Dave Wolfram, second. Um, is there any further discussion? Uh, just that the uh, Deerfield Town Office, this uh, election will take place um, obviously beforehand and uh, with early voting and all. Um, but it, uh, the, if you want to come vote in person, it'll be Tuesday, the third day of November. 2020 from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. That's it. So I thought we did this already, but you think? Yeah, but it's okay. It's oh. all right to vote it again. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Oh, did you second it? Dave seconded yes, it. Yes, he did. Okay. All, the, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn. Okay. okay. It's, it's probably good just to do hey, it again. I'm just happy to read it three times. Can I oh. read it three times? <laughs> oh, I thought we did it when Barb was here, but that's okay. We'll um, do it again the next meeting. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Barb's design contract for the town commons. Yes. Could you just talk about that? Yes. Uh, so we approved this a while back, um, and what happened was um, this was kind of in Berkshire Designs format, and what, what Casey had done was work with Lisa and um, and our town council to kind of put it in the town uh, format yeah. and sent it on to Berkshire Design. They had their council review it. Um, I think everybody is on board now with the language, and uh, we can just go ahead and, and vote it and approve it. Okay. Dave, did you have any questions of Trevor on this? Um. Okay, so the final contract will have the dollar amounts and the dates in them? Yeah, let's see. They, they haven't changed. Let's see if I can find these on here. The fees and reimbursement costs shall not exceed in this blank. Where is, Did uh, you... Um, I hadn't seen the final payment. That's on the very first page. Casey, did oh, you have he a didn't dollar? put it in. Yeah, Jeff didn't put it in. I think it's because he's got it in his attachment. Oh, oh, I see. On the very first page, yeah. Right. Uh, let me... He's got it in his attachment. Let me go back here a second. I'm sure I can get it. Do we have it in the other meeting? Um, there Where is it? I'm trying to find it myself, and I can't find it because I'm scrolling. Um, I'm, not sure I'm not sure there's a contract in here, Kate. I didn't see one. I had one that I had given to everybody. I'm pr I can I print it right now, Carolyn. Okay, well, I have this one. I mean, I have my copy, but I don't know if that's the official copy enough to sign it. No, oh, I'll print it. Don't worry about it. I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm looking through the attachment to see where his amount is because it was, you guys approved up to 30000 Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, because it was under And like his 27. quote was not. I thought his quote was under that. Was, his quote yeah, was. was his quote was um find the right paperwork here i've got so many i know um hold on this is what happens when there's too much to do hold on okay. all right I on page it. two on number five is see uh the documents on or before there's no date yep because i'm looking at it Hold on. Okay. I'm trying to find the. So I found the proposal. Yep. There's the project. I think on that proposal, he's going to have it ready for the so, next round. What we wanted was to be ready for the next round of right. um, complete. So. That's why there's no state in here. Okay. So the total design fee is $22,750. $22,750. Twenty-two thousand seven fifty, but there's a second section because this is 
<clears throat> design and construction observation. So it's 22750 for design development for the entire design section and then the construction documentation and observation is 8200. So you're going to want to put so it's just at so let's what was the total combined? That's that's nine hundred and fifty dollars over what we agreed, right? Yes. No. That's, that's over what we agreed. Wow. No, I thought we grew, we agreed to thirty thousand, up to thirty thousand. I thought you agreed to thirty thousand too. We agreed because it was when you added both of them up, it was just under thirty. Well, he had twenty two seven fifty and eighty two hundred, so. I just want to make sure it hasn't changed from. Um, if you go that. to the copier, I just printed the proposal. If you go to the copier, and I think that's the one that you sent me. It's the one from seven twenty four twenty. That's the one that I got from. Right. The so you don't lose it. Yeah, it's that right. So both both the contract and the proposal are printed. Yeah, this this hasn't changed. It was Thirty thousand nine fifty. Yep. What we had. Mhm. Mm That's what I thought it said. If we had forty thousand, is what we were already approved. Yep. Remember, forty thousand was our total. Oh, so it was forty, not thirty. Yeah, forty is what we have. In, forty is in the total that was approved, approved by town meeting. Project. Okay. Okay. And, and so we can the, we can go ahead with this. Right. Then. Okay. All right. And then, uh, so what was this? Figure. So, and then also the date, he's going to deliver this in time. Yeah, so, so, I mean, before we were, you know, we dragged our feet a little bit on this, so let's just see. He was, the, the timeline was, um, the, he was going to do the survey and the base plan was supposed to be finished by August 14th. If right, we had so the timeline's right? different now because this was all planned in July and uh -huh. we're in October. So what might be useful is if we get Jeff to clarify what his timeline would be. Yeah, because, before we, right. because we need to have an end date on the contract. So I could send him an email and ask him before yeah. we send him an executed contract. Yeah. Okay, what I, what I want to make sure is I'm pretty sure that um, Complete Streets has some kind of April deadline. And, yeah. we, and we would want to come through and have this go through our um, budget and capital program. Correct. So we need a date as soon as possible, Casey. Right. So because the so deadline for capital is December, right? Yeah, because the way this was set up, if he started in August, he was going to have the bidding stuff done to go out to bid between the end of October and the beginning of uh, and the end of uh, between October 31st and November 27th. We would do mobilization and construction in March of next year. Okay. And then, but that's all, see, what I wanted to focus on, on is the first part to get the design done because we still need to come, we got to figure out how much is this going to cost mm -hmm. and then go to the special town, you know, go to the annual town meeting. Right. The project probably wouldn't happen until the summer. Right. Unless you were able to submit this under complete streets. Maybe. Yeah, but I just don't know how we know that soon. Mm -hmm. You know, what the total is going to be, and then bring it to town meeting and see if town meeting is okay, and then decide what funding sources we would go through some CPA money or um, CPC money. Can you just, I, I think we would want to make it as fast as possible. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. All if right. we can, because if we can catch an early thing, but I just want to make sure that I don't. I don't tell the public we're going to get this done by the spring and then how would, you know. Yeah, we can't guarantee still, that right now, Trevor, especially not with COVID. We don't right. know yep. what things are going to look like. Right. 
I know. Are there two cycles of complete streak? I think so. Okay. I think so. We missed the fall one already. Yeah. So maybe the we The fall yeah. one was in September, and I think the spring one is in April. So really, was or March or April, something like that. It, and we it, don't it, know whether that would change either in terms of funding, well, Carolyn, because we don't know what the state's doing with the budget yet. No, things, things are already getting messed up because the state doesn't have a budget. Right. So, this money uh, is not under the bond bill, so this is part of the operating budget, yeah. and that operating budget is totally messed up. Right, so, so it might work in our favor. So um, it might, it yeah. looked like, you know, between the start and the construction <laughs> document was a couple of months for them, so they might be able to knock it out this winter and have it ready for annual. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we could have those meetings with... So we'll I think what you should do is consider putting at least a framework document together, Trevor, with Jeff's yeah. help to submit yeah. to capital. So I think right. that first piece would be how do we develop something basic to submit to capital with the understanding yeah. that we would have to update that as we get of into course. the budget process by at the latest by February. Correct. Yeah. I think you did have a you know a, a really rough figure in here of a three hundred to four hundred, I think is what he says, right? Yeah, you're right about that. It was like three to four hundred if we did, you know, but it really depended on what we were gonna do. Um, so okay, so we'll get with him for sure and kind of nail down a calendar. Okay, so what I would like to know is whether you would approve the chair to sign it um, af so that we can fi and have time, give us time to fill in the, the information. Yep. Um, or, you know, have the board sign it th at their convenience once we have that completion timeline so that, so that we can um, clarify that for, the for purposes of filling in the rest of the contract. All three of us signed, so let's just yeah. vote um, that it will be for, um, you know, at our convenience. Okay. 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 So why don't you make a motion? So make a motion to approve the first year design group contract for the town common design work. And um, with, with the understanding Casey's going to work on the, um, with, with first year design that our kind of schedule now that we're starting much later than what we were thinking and that the Board would come in and sign at their convenience. Okay. Dave Wolfram, second. For the for the uh, the total of um, uh, thirty thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. Thirty thousand nine hundred fifty, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the total. Is Not to exceed. Any, is there any further uh, discussion? Uh, no. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Dave Wolfram. I curl enough. Okay. I see Phoebe is here. Hi, Phoebe. Hey, Phoebe. Hi. Am I on a jumbotron? Yes, actually, yes, you are. are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, you are. Okay. Um, listen, so how, how, did, how did your first meeting go? Yeah, we're the first ones to hear. Yes, you are. Hi, and nice to see you again, David. Um, uh, really fascinating, super interesting. It's going to be, it's going to be really interesting. So, um, I was just on the COVID vax appointed by the governor to the COVID vaccination advisory group. So this was the first meeting that I'm just left a little early to come to you guys. And, um, it was really interesting, very interesting people, all kinds of folks from, uh, lots of infectious disease doctors and um, hospital people and community health center people and um, civil rights folks and geriatricians and um, lots of people from DPH and um, and me. <laughs> um, right. So I appear to be the only person from Western Mass there um, and from what I could tell also the only person associated with local public health. So, um, so I feel like I have a lot to uh, represent there um, and I will be definitely you, keeping you very much in touch with how that goes. But it seemed like a really oh. smart, engaged, great group of people who have some good, important things to think about. Um, mostly involving, you know, not a lot of the mechanics of the rollout because the DPH is handling a lot of that, but a lot of how to, what the barriers will be to meeting the federal prioritization of who gets it when and how um, uh, and that kind of stuff. So 
I'll definitely keep you posted. The one thing that is concerning to me already, Phoebe, is uh, that federal mandates have entered into the MIIS system in 24 hours. That seems to be, you know, if we're working very hard as volunteers to get it out, you know, we're going to do the best we can, but then to turn around and get it into the system that fast seems very unrealistic. We will need to be using PrepMod to do that. The software that they just bought that, you know, we in the health district, we are, of course, you know, we're, we are well underway in our flu season. And so, you know, us having, we're not using that because it isn't ready yet, but um, it will be ready fairly soon. And we will need to learn how to use it before the COVID vaccination happens because it will be on a health what is that? It's a piece what of software that? That, the, that the state just bought that is like essentially allows those of us who aren't doctor's offices but are giving vaccine to have something that's the equivalent of an electronic health record. It's an on-site, immediately the person gets their vaccine and the thing and it goes into the, I mean, there has to be a human involved, of course, but it's an online, immediate, um, on-site electronic health record that would allow you to essentially they would get their information that day as they were getting the shot. So that's what they're saying we would, we would need I to use. It. You know, um, and that's I think we, we've been to some training on that already. The health district staff has been, and, um, and you know, we aren't using it, like I said, because it isn't ready for flu season yet, but, um, but it will become ready in the next few weeks is what we've been told. So we should have plenty of time so to we, practice. So would we be doing iPads and then entering it in from the iPad? I think okay. it's going to be something like that. Yep, Carolyn, that's exactly right. So it will so, make it, it will mean that the flow, you know, it will impact the flow of drive throughs and things like that. Oh, God. That means also more equipment to purchase and fuss with. It took but less about, paper. You know, an hour and a half. Yes, it's less paper, but. There'll be no paper, oh in fact, which would be great. Right. Right. I, yeah. I agree with that, but honestly, uh, that's a lot of information to be downloading. It would almost be better if they could come up with a way to, um, you know, mail a barcode to people. They bring that with them, and then you can, like, snap the picture, and then you, all the stuff is there. It's really hard to kind of enter everybody's name and address and all that stuff. It was about an hour and a half to get through a busy line, you know, for one person. That was only 400 people. Can you imagine doing thousands? I think, yeah, no, I think it's, there are so many hard questions. I mean, as you know, there are very different um, storage requirements for the different vaccines. There are different, yeah. there are very clear different phases that the government is putting out about who gets it when. So, um, you know, yeah. it's unlikely that there will be, I think, massive amounts of it all available at the same time, right? Um, right. So, so that may change a little bit the mechanics of how it gets given out too. Yeah, um, that's it's, true. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, like I said, this was the first yeah. meeting. Just, yeah, but, sure. yeah. Uh, did they talk, I learned a did lot. Did they say anything about, anything about the, um, you know, free the below 80 below freezing storage capacity? I mean, nobody has capacity like that. No, in fact, we did talk about that and that being a real challenge. I mean, some people have it, but they aren't evenly across the state. And apparently if you order one now, it'll be March or April before you get one. So, um, so yeah, that's a real concern. It, um, they, I did hear from, I did hear that the um, stuff that has to be stored at 80 below can be shipped in dry ice and can be used anytime within five days is what I understood it to be. Please don't quote me on this, but that's, they were, a slide went okay. by rather quickly that looked like, it's not like every single place would have to have this freezer, you just would have to use it within five days of getting it. So that yeah. was that was news to me and good news, I think, because um, if they have their shipping, you know, their sort of su supply system worked out well, potentially we could get it and without owning one of those freezers. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, so good. I'll keep, I mean, well, every time we have one of those COVID roundtables every other, you know, every two weeks, I'll definitely give an update on um, what I've learned and, um, and well, it, it, it would be should. really helpful so we could try to tweak our um, EDS plan as we're going. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it was great to get up and running. It was great to know that we have good volunteers and, you know, just, uh, we need to figure out what we have to adjust 
you know. Well, you possible. will probably uh, like to know that they said they were going to have at least three tabletops, DPH said. So, um, okay. All right, that's great. Um, we'll, we'll volunteer if you are looking for. I'll pass rabbit. that on when they okay. get asking. Okay, so All you right. asked me here to talk about the CARES MOU and COVID and what we're up to. What um, uh, should, can I just give you a little overview? Is that an okay with you? I know you've been at this already for a while, but um, um, so I don't want to. I don't want to take a huge amount of your time. But um, well, we, hey, uh, I mean, Phoebe, we, what we wanted to do was just let you know that we were we we're just worried because we know that. The um, the schools have a shortage. Thank you. The schools have a shortage of, of money. So we wanted to make sure we could transfer as much as possible of our CARES money over to the school. That was our, our real concern, I think. Gotcha. Or at least my sure. concern. Sure. Totally, totally. I'm, I'm happy to be here, happy to discuss it, and that's a totally reasonable, reasonable concern. Um, I guess I just want to say so the sort of like the 10,000 foot you know, um, uh, level. Uh, when the COVID um, crisis started, the state sent out, uh, I mean, obviously it sort of blew through everything all of us had prepared for, right? We passed a budget in January. Well, we sent that out. That's what our, our, our um, staffing was set up for. And we all got very busy as you know so very well, just how busy everybody is. Um, and so that, meant that there were a bunch of expenses that are way above and beyond what we budgeted for. And um, we were really lucky that at the state level, we got um, that grant money that came out from the state almost immediately. Um, that allowed us to um, add uh, temporary um, nurses, surge nurses, right, for the district um, so that, that um, we could actually handle the cases. As you probably know, Deerfield has had more cases than any other town in our district. Um, and just so that you have a sense of expenditures, um, the COVID related work that's not part of your existing budget, you know, the one that the grant state grant funding has paid for has paid for so far $10,000 of related work um, or in the nurses and then the 7,000 um, of your health agents time that we reimbursed you for out of that grant funding. So, um, uh, in terms, Trevor, when I called the office earlier today, Trevor asked me to like if I could give you some numbers about um, what Deerfield received out of that. So that's sort of like direct staffing hours. And then there's been a lot of um, other work, as I'm sure you know, about uh, pulling together the communication systems. You guys are in a wonderful school district. It does have kids and teachers in it from 30 different towns at least. You've got three different public health nurses relating to your high school. Um, right, from your four different towns, share three different public health nurses. So there's a lot of communication to work out and a lot of systems. We're hard at work on that. I know um, that, as you know, we're very hard at work on the whole flu clinic um, activity, and that has gotten exponentially harder. I mean, just, just, uh, you guys just experienced it, you know, five, six times harder than it was before with a lot, a lot of demand, way more paper, way more, um, volunteers needed, it's a very challenging process and this um, pressure from the state to get the um, information in very quickly as well um, is, is also pretty stressful. So that has required some additional expenses in terms of um, um, vaccine administration and signage and uh, uh, supplies uh, for the vaccine for the flu clinics. So that's sort of like the big cluster of things we're working on, you know, and then every case, I think one thing that I often hear questions from people is like, well, there's not that many cases going on right now, but do think that every case as, as I think, at least for sure, Carolyn knows, because you're our point of contact whenever there is one in Deerfield, every, the people who are getting sick with COVID now in, in Massachusetts are younger. And as younger people, they generally have a lot more contacts. And so an individual case might involve I think our last one, there were 20 people we had to find, you know, and work with them to make sure that they are quarantined and follow up with them every day, every other day, you know, to check in on them and make sure they're okay, make sure they're not getting sick, 
So even the scale of the infections is just a small part of the work involved with a particular case. So that is all just to say, this is what we're sort of doing as, you know, as your um, public health nursing program. Um, and when the federal government put out CARES Act money, um, it was understood that one of the things the CARES Act money is expressly for is um, the expansion of the public health work that has been demanded by the pandemic. So um, there's no other state funding source for local public health work and across the state, um, every city and town who has more work to do because of COVID, this is the one stop place they can go to get it. So it's my assumption that you're getting it to supplement um, Dick's time, I, I would hope. Um, and that, so that's the original reason for the CARES Act MOU that I sent to you was early on in like May, we started talking about this at the Health District Oversight Board. And then we came up with a little analysis of like worst case scenario that we thought at the time, you know, um, it would, what could, what could we possibly still potentially need above and beyond our FY21 budget. And that's what you got uh, asked to sign. So essentially the MOU I've sent you is based exactly on the same one that you have signed for years as being part of the district. And um, just says that as your public health nurse, we will, um, we can access some of that same funding that any community, any other, every other community's public health nurse would be um, able to access through the CARES funding. It's just one step more complicated since we aren't the town of Deerfield. So I sent that to all 15 of the towns and I think I have 12 back so far. Um, so that's looking good. I, I, I think a couple towns are too small. They're not even gonna apply for CARES Act money. Um, the towns that are in the, you know, under 300 and everybody else has is applying for CARES Act money and has signed the MOU and sent it back. So there's no possibility that like somehow Deerfield's money would be carrying other communities. They've all agreed that this is um, important. And, and we, and I think one last thing, and I'll stop talking and answer your questions, um, is you should know that it's the place of last resort, right? It's the place we would go last when um, we don't have any other source, like when we would be attempting to use that money only as needed, only very clearly for Deerfield. Every expense, every hour that people spend is tagged Deerfield um, that is Deerfield appropriate. And so you can be assured that you would be um, only billed for work for Deerfield and only if we had to do it because we can't get it done in the work, in the time and the money that we have. So let me stop talking there and see if you have questions. Carolyn, do you want to? Um, I, I'm not sure how much CARES money we have left, Judy. That's the only thing, too. Um, do you know, Casey? Yes, we have plenty. We can, we can okay. absorb this. We're concerned about how much we would have to absorb in other areas and in fact, Brenda and John and I are going to sit down after I get back next week and and discuss it because we do know that we do know that there's some significant purchases coming up, not only for the schools, but for the town. But I did add a little bit of money into one of our categories to do this. Um, in the event that we ran into it, because as Phoebe says, they're hoping it's a last resort. But if it needs to happen, I wanted us to be able to at least incorporate as much of that request as we could. So do we have a dollar amount that you foresee and um, would we know ahead of time that you would uh, need this money and is there any other vehicle that we could use um, to give you that money versus um, so so my biggest my fear is like we just get bills and we don't you know we didn't know they were coming and that kind of thing and or, or are we setting out a certain amount of money for this or is, do you have an idea oh, what, oh, what oh it understood take? sure I'm, I'm sorry i don't actually have the document right in front of me do you uh casey yeah it had a dollar figure associated with it um, i want to say it was around eleven thousand three hundred. yeah it's an, okay so it's an up to eleven thousand dollars is what we estimated okay. um and yep. 
the way the CARES Act works, Trevor, is that they have to, you have to report to the um, federal funds office at, um, you know, at A&F every few months. And so yep. what we would do is send a bill for you in time for you to you include it. There's one that's going to be due at the end of October. Um, and then yep. we can give you the invoice. So you would have a sense of how it was going. And certainly mm -hmm. at the oversight committee, we can have a standing item of discussion Sort of use of the CARES Act and you guys making sure you're understanding how that's being done. But I can tell you that in the frequent, in the like little memo I sent you is the specific thing that would only be used for, you know, and so it's essentially communicable disease uh, investigation for COVID, right? Yep. And yep. anything that has to do with the flu clinic to make it COVID safe that isn't already covered by the Biddles funds, right? So Right there, you're really just looking at this being the the emergency release valve. If the cases are so many um, that we require um, more staff, and, and 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 traditionally they have been. I mean, I just told you since March, um, we've spent. If you count, if you don't count Dick's time, it's ten thousand yeah. dollars we've spent since March above and beyond um, our, you know, your regular budget on Deerfield related COVID work. So if we assume it's about that same length of time, that's why it's eleven thousand dollars. You know, so I think I don't have a feeling that it would be more than that. I don't know. I mean, we none of us knows, right? But but right. Um, I, yeah, I, I used my best right. information I could to estimate the dollar figure. And um, and yes, you you would be absolutely fine. To your other question, you could pay it out of some other place if you wanted. But I just want to make sure that. I mean, this is absolutely what the federal government intended for you to be able to use right. this money for. They intended for you not to have to go to your taxpayers to go for more um, response yeah. in the pandemic. So, how, how much Biddle's money do we have for um, the four towns here? Well, two of your towns are not getting Biddle's money through the district. So, I don't know what they're getting. I don't have any idea what they are doing. Um, uh, I could probably find that out from Tracy for you. And then okay. there is for the health district Biddles, uh, for the health district flu clinics in, com in total, it's $15,000. Um, so, and basically as people have expenses, they're sending the invoices into me and I'm paying them. So, um, okay. um I have, I, I bought two copiers uh, Saturday night before our flu clinic and I, um, I bought sanitizers, you know, uh, bottles of sanitizers for each of the stations. I'm not going to put in for food because, um, I mean, nobody ate very much, yeah. or, you know, the snack or had very much water. So I'm just going to save it for another time. So. I would, but I would like to get reimbursed. And that was just, you know, that was less than $200, so. Sure, sure, yeah, um, Lisa told me, Lisa told me about the copiers and, and um, yeah, that's fine. Um, I think you have the form. It's the same form we've been using right along for reimbursement, but if right. not, I can send it to you. One of my concerns is I wanna make sure that we're ordering needles. And I, I think our order is so old that we need to resubmit it again. And I wanna make sure that every single dollar of our middles money is being used for needles. If we Yes, can. Lisa is, uh, Lisa and I talked about needles today and um, and she is very on the ball with that because this is a, it's a statewide issue. I mean, I just what was meeting in a meeting earlier today with Berkshire County and they said they they think they're gonna have to turn people away from their flu clinics because of the needles, not, not the vaccine. Right. Um, well, EPH has been saying that it's regional shortages only, but that's how the whole PPE thing started. Yeah, I know. With PPE. So I want to make sure that our order is valid and that every dime that we have under the middles money goes for those needles right now. Okay. Uh -huh. um, I can I can work with Lisa on that. I mean, are you thinking about because of COVID vaccination or you're talking about for these flu clinics? Oh, no. We have, we have a like six, I, I don't know, five or 6,000 needles, but that's not enough, especially if it's a double shot per person in our communities, because we have about 12,000. Right. And if we, and if it's a double shot, then obviously it's over 20,000. So I want to make sure that we're ordering our needles. And if we have the Biddles money, that every dollar should be spent on that. And, and 
some of this money, COVID money, should be spent on, on the order. Yeah, and, and, um, and that's absolutely part of it. I, I mean, just so, so you know, we, we absolutely are thinking about that and doing those orders. So, okay. I mean, you, there may be more that you want. want yeah, I just want to make sure it's just not sitting there being spent trying to get a needle so that we can do, you know, distribute the COVID vaccine. Yes, okay, duly noted. Um, we put that order in over the summer. We put that order over the summer, but if it's just sitting there, like, you know, our, uh, for excess, you know, because not all our vaccine came in. So, right. I know. I mean, we had we had vaccine. We had a partial delivery on Saturday, you know, afternoon before our Sunday clinic, but we did not get the whole amount. So, yeah. um, I'm not I'm not really worried about it at some, you know, because Lisa has to go out and do home visits and stuff like that. But I am concerned that our our needle order is still not filled, and then after a while, it just you know gets lost in the system or is dead. And I want to make sure that it's a valid request still, and that we're in the queue for needles. Okay, I will. I will work on that and get back to you, um, uh, and, okay. and check. I'll ask. I'll ask whether we need to resubmit it or not. Um, for what it's worth, I, I think, I I don't think we're about to be doing these COVID vaccination clinics anytime soon. Oh, oh, oh I, I, I know. But I want to make sure that we get our needles in. Because everybody in the country I, I should be totally. Yep, yep, and, absolutely. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Well, we've been trying to be proactive for years. And yes, so thank I goodness. Want, yeah. I, well, I don't want our, our order to not be valid. Right. And then, so, so if you can track down the Biddle's money for Waitley, and Sunderland, I'm sure that they would, those towns would approve um, purchasing needles as well. I mean, we yes. could, you know, get to vote or whatever. I don't know. But we had, Deerfield was the lead on this, and we want to make sure that our order goes through. So. And I think um, it's, a, it's an interesting point around sort of cost sharing. You know, you and Conway are the people paying into the district to do all of the uh, medical part of the of these clinics, and so you know, I don't know if you have any kind of arrangement with Sunderland and Waitley around cost sharing or sure. afterwards. Know, you know, won't. we can certainly tell you after it's all over how many people came from each community, and you guys can talk with that the board of the towns. And yeah, that'd be very helpful because we would. I mean, we 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 work regionally on so many things with Waitley and Sunderland. Um, uh, you know, I, I, this is one area I think they're going to want to as well, especially with the facility that we have for this. Yeah, I think it makes sense. And I know Tom Bajkevich had talked about using the Sunderland Fire Department in that same same kind of vein, but that's kind of one day versus the four that we had. And um, I think it just worked out really well this past Sunday. Yeah, the, uh, that building was just just a home run. And uh, you know, I, I said I praise Carolyn and, and Lisa for sure. I mean, they, everybody just worked so hard on that, and it really worked well, very well. So I'd love to see that. You know, I'd love yeah. to see that regional cooperation with the other towns too, if they if they'd like to. Yeah. No, I'm sure they want to purchase needles as well. So I'll get um, back to you with what they got for Biddles, and also eventually when we get the data back, um, the Waitley and Sunderland um, attendance at your two clinics. Right. Okay. All right, that would be helpful because um, we we all have CARES money and uh, we certainly don't want to return any money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. So, Dave, did you have any questions? No, no, you had, you addressed the uh, so the expenditures that we want to make sure we're ahead of. Yeah, and we just want to make sure that we're getting the PPE and we're get you know we're stockpiling that whatever we can get. I know. I mean, we're, we're able to deliver, but it would be nice to get what we really think we need. Yeah. yeah. And we want to, per we, we need to purchase it now, or at least put the order out so we're in the queue. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And I just was afraid we, we rushed through and voted the extra vaccine and, you know, expenses back in the summer. And I was just worried that our order would be perceived as you know, too old. So if you can follow up on it, I would make sure to re-enter it or something. 
Will do. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion on this. So make a motion to approve the uh, M M O U with uh, um, the uh, motion to approve the M O U with Franklin County Council Franklin Regional Council of Government for the um, COVID Health Services to the C P H S Member Towns Cares Act expenses. I'll second that, Dave Wolfman. Okay, is there any further more discussion? Nope. All, okay, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Charlie Knapp. Thank you, Stevie, for yeah. coming to our meeting. I'm sorry. Oh, that, uh, my pleasure. I'm sorry I'm not there in person. Um, I just hope I'm not like 15 feet tall. <laughs> um, I do. I did want to tell you one other thing that I think will hopefully be reassuring to you. You know the um, list of approved expenses that is part of the um, CARES Act it, there was a link to it in the thing I sent you, and it's their, sort of their standard two page, what you can spend this money on. There are little asterisks yep. next to the things that they say need to be submitted to FEMA first. And none of, okay. what we, none of what we are proposing to do for you, because we aren't your health agent, we're just your public health nurse, none of that goes to FEMA. So you can be reassured that if we bill you for this, it, A, it was done in Deerfield, and B, it is reimbursable by money that's already in Massachusetts. So okay. There, okay. whereas some of the CARES Act expenses are things that FEMA can also pay for, and they insist that you go to FEMA first for those things. Yeah. So I just wanted you to know in case you're getting th those, you know, you're having those conversations in other contexts, with CARES Act money, that that won't apply here. You won't, you shouldn't be rejected for anything we give you for from CARES. Okay. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, Casey um, is hiring some um, additional help on that because the FEMA, the FEMA paperwork is just disgusting. Oh, I know. Oh, I can't believe we're doing it again. Yeah. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> Casey. <laughs> Bonding, it was traumatized in 2011, and here we are. Now it's worse. Yeah. Oh yeah. It is now worse. It's so, terrible. And it, and it seemed like we really were trying to be on top of it, and it's just, it is overwhelming. So, uh, before you, I leave, um, I was just going to tell you that at the COVID uh, coordination roundtable we had the other day, we had a bunch of discussions about um, Halloween and rules, and a bunch of people gave input into what they'd like to see on sort of trick or treating guidance and stuff. And we so we just finished a poster that we're about to print and make available Good. and also have it digitally. So I can um, forward that to you if you if it would be useful to you. Yes, yes please. Yes, yes, please. We're just talking about that and trying to figure out how we can um, make oh, Halloween boy. safe. Okay, Kevin. well, um, we had a great conversation with a bunch of different towns and we looked at CDC and Massachusetts guidance and I will send it to Casey after I get off the phone right now. I'll send it to all three of you, Thank you. all four of you. Thank and, you, Phoebe. Kate, and, Thank you. and Phoebe, just one more thing. Um, sure. Trevor said that you had some um, outreach from DPH on um, our ventilation. Uh, you know, for the senior center, everyone is concerned because of droplets and air, airborne transmission. I think she was going to call. Can I not press oh. send to you? I, I sent. Um, Look at your email, Carolyn. I sent you an email with the results of the conversation and some links on um, some guidance a couple of hours ago, I think. Like oh, around okay. Three. Well, we've, we've been in meetings for a couple hours, so I'll look at the four, guidance. Four hours. Thank okay. you. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. And, and feel free to call me if any of it doesn't make sense. But yeah, I sent you a, a bunch of links and, and answers from the state about your question. Great. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Hello. Thanks, Phoebe. Bye. 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 Nice to see you all. Sorry, I can't see you very well. Yeah, there's two trees down here and there. Yeah, I've got some. Uh, Kevin, can you give us a little update? Or, How are you doing? Do you need anything? Um, if you don't have to travel, don't travel. Stay off the roads. Multiple roads are closed. River Road, um, Stillwater Road, Boynton Road, Lee Road. Uh, upper road. Um, you think I can get home? You think I can get home? <laughs> Those are all the roads I need to take to get home. <laughs> five and ten, as long as they open 91 again, you'll be okay. Oh, no, 91. Yeah, 91 north and south are both closed. So it's quite a little horror show right now. 
that just is an electric. When I, when I was trying to get off of River Road on the north end, yeah, it took me literally almost 10 minutes because traffic was so bad they wouldn't let me out. Wow. So finally, I just took my spotlight and blinded the person coming the other direction. They stopped and I pulled out. <laughs> so yeah. Do well, I have to camp water. here tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I think you should be okay. I think 116 is closed too, heading towards Conway. Uh, Matthews Road, Conway's closed. Yeah. Um, Greenfield got devastated. That was a rough. Really? Storm. I mean, so. Yeah, that was rough. That's what I know so far. Well, if you need anything, reach out. We're around. So. Okay. Well, we're just new to help. Bouncing around. We, I think we pretty much taken care of what we can for now. Now it's just wait for uh, Eversource to come through and yeah, take the trees off the wires and then we can take care of it from there. But. And there are electrical fires, so please, please stay away from lines down. Don't, yeah, exactly. Like a lot of lines that are down are still live. They're still jumping they are around. Live and they're on Very the careful. Yep. Okay. Um, so that's about all I know. Thank you for, for help. As soon as they stopped coming, I said, oh, here's another one for Kevin. Yeah. So, so is nice. everybody aware that whatever I had planned for this week and next week, yep. you can be tied up. Push off another eight to ten days. Right. We get it. Oh, we get at least we got at least another week worth of cleanup, if not more. Yeah, it looks pretty bad. So it was fast, but it was damaging. Yeah, I'm just glad it's fast. I know. Boy, imagine if that took the time. Oh, it was rough. Um, and then you got four poles down over here on. Uh, oh yeah, Pleasant Street closed. Pleasant Street. Yeah. Um, so they took down four telephone poles. Um, is school going to be open tomorrow? I doubt it. I don't at this point. So. Okay. I would not count on anything at this point. Yeah. Eversource is running around. I have not seen an Eversource truck yet. Yeah. I have not seen a tree crew yet. They've got to be all over. So they are. It came west. They're overwhelmed. overwhelmed. It came from the west, northwest, and it must have just destroyed all the way down through. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Okay. Where in Greenfield did it hit? I honestly don't know. All I heard was they just, I was listening to the radio, and they were just squawking, this road's closed, that road's closed, and okay. it was, they just they just kept rambling them off, so. Okay. So they seem to be fairly busy. Um, John Collins, extra people to help you out. I'm sorry? John Collins, some extra people to help you out. Yeah, John, John's got a bunch of people in already, so, so they should be in good shape. Adam right now is in the process of just counting up the rest of the roads that need to be done. He's then going to reach out to Eversource, make sure that they're aware of exactly which areas we're looking for, mm -hmm. and then we're at their mercy as to when they can get out here. Okay. So, so we're about as good as we can be for what we got. Yeah. Um, you should be okay so long as you take. I would take five and ten. All right. Home, because I would go. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, you can make it home. We're on Star Map. Yeah, because yeah, it was cause, cause Lee Road is closed further up. Okay. From you. You mean should I, should I, uh, should then go by um, Gilmore's and up over the bridge? That's correct. Right. Yeah, don't go up 116 because you'll never get through. All right. But that has closed at Boynton Road. Yeah, there's. A, uh, Robots on Stillwater. Uh, I think there's two places on Stillwater. So there's one right there, right by. Uh, uh, if you're heading north. From Lee Road, we'll go up the road about a thousand yards. There's one down, and I think there's another one probably about four thousand yards up the road. Another one down. Wow. So what we're doing now is we're pushing off a weekend that's got nothing to do with wires. Yeah. So that way, once EverSource gets their part of it done, there's nobody waiting on us. Right. So our part's going to be done. Realistically, I'm, I'm just. Gathering the guys back at the shop at this point because we're waiting for forever source. Forever yeah. source to turn power off. Okay. Okay. If power goes off, we can start pushing ship out of the way, but until yeah. then. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to touch it, not up. No, no, please be safe. Hey, yeah. Kevin. Kevin. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to make a put a plug in to thank you for setting up what you did over at the highway garage for Carolyn oh. and the EDS. Yeah. Because oh, sure. oh, that, that was, was awesome. huge. All the behind the scenes well. stuff. Really good. Hmm. It was all, all the guys, all the guys pulled together, jumped right into it, got everything cleaned up. You know, they did a nice job. They did. It was making sure everything was out of the way. You know, it, was it, it took some time, but uh, you know, basically gave the place a good. It was a fantastic facility. And, and for it that. was, and it was really, really effective. Oh, and and great. moving and having you move everything over on Friday and then move it back on Monday. Yeah, it's a lot wonderful. of work. We appreciate That's a it. huge lot of work. We used to 
move that all that ourselves. All right. So, so no problem. It's wicked nice. Wicked nice. Cool. Cool. Good. And thank you. All right. Thank uh, you. We should be in good shape. Yep. Kevin, thank you for coming in and right. giving us some good advice. Yeah, because I would have gone up probably Stillwater, Mill Village, and Stillwater. Yeah, Mill Village, Stillwater, Lee Road, that area is just kind of a okay. pretty so, so I can't get at my grandson. <laughs> yeah, there's, he's, yeah, he's over at Meadow Wolf. Uh, high volume. Meadow Oak. E boy. That's, uh, that's right I in the area where the trees are. I don't think so. No. I want to say there's another tree down between there and, say, like Tango Lake North. Oh. Yep. So you can't even make a quick cut around. Yeah. But, uh, but if it opens up, I'll, I'll give you a second. Later. Okay. No. All right, we're good. Have a good one, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Let us know if you need anything. Okay. There's usually a big difference between. Different Might need a flashlight, but my uh, back door's open. I said you might need a flashlight, but my back door's open. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, next item on the agenda is reduction in town annual fee for on premise pour, um, pouring. Yep. Um, I, I feel really strongly that we need, you know, a lot of these businesses have only yeah. been open a little bit and they're struggling. We need and, to for uh, sure. I, I feel like most of the Money is used for like police response and you know uh, yep. you know Dick inspects Bob inspects you know and the fire departments inspect but honestly um, I feel like they need a break. No, if we can help our businesses right so now, this I, is the I time. Mean, I would like to, um, and I don't think that anything's going to happen. For, really, we're in this for a while longer. Oh yeah. It's, it's, so um, I I would like to reduce this by you know either fifty percent or seventy five. Do you know what the fee is right now? Well, normally aren't it isn't it normally fifteen hundred dollars? Um, I think so. Um, keep in mind that this is a revenue source. I would suggest right. the discussion out in the STAM and the um, MM the MMA Managers Association is about twenty five percent. Because right. not only are the state's revenues down, but our, our revenues are going to be down as well. So my suggestion would be up to 25%. And this is only for on-premise pouring, um, which right. would encompass wine and malt and all alcoholic for basically restaurants. Um, mm -hmm. So anybody with an on-premise pouring license of that qualifier. I mean, that's but okay. I think of, I don't know. We have to be careful of our revenue sources. On the other hand, no, it does it, it does make good sense to support our businesses. Why don't we just do a little research on how much revenue that is and then do it next week? Um, that makes sense. Okay. That gives us a little bit of time, Carolyn, to put together the entire yeah. revenue source amount. Yeah. For those right. licenses. Well, that, Brenda will be back, and then um, then we'll know what the total revenue source is. Because I don't, I, I honestly feel this. like twenty five percent is not enough. Well, let's, you know? look, let's yeah. look at the numbers. And so, see okay. we're, so we're keep in with. mind, we usually send these license renewal, we send the license renewal paperwork out in October. So this would push us back yeah, to yeah. at least the twenty second of October. Um, okay. So that is time to do it. Um, I just want to be sure that you understand that timeline because that license renewal That's paperwork is predicated on the state's requirements for return, which is the end of November. Yeah, so we'll, mm -hmm. we'll get on this fast, but let's just do a little quick, quick research on the, the amount of revenue. And I'm sorry, I don't have work. those numbers in front of me. I thought about it, but then I never asked Brenda. She was on vacation. Yeah. So. Right, right. We'll wait till she's back and let's get that info. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm okay with that, but I just feel like 25% isn't reflective of what's happening. The to need. Them. Yeah. I mean, they we they were shut together. down. Yeah. They were shut down in March. No. Barely able to get going, and yeah. I would see for this next year. Just as tough. Just as tough. I mean, we're talking probably summer. I know. I know. Yep. So, I mean, I feel like it's like almost a year from now. So. Okay. I, I feel like just 25% is just not enough. I know. I know that we have to be conservative, and I am conservative, but this doesn't seem seem like the right place not to be sensitive 
to our businesses. Anything we can do to keep our local businesses going. You know, we're going to get no money if they go out of business. Right. I mean, that's my honest. We're not going to get meals tax. We're not going to get liquor license. We're not going to do anything if they go out of business. Right. So well, in my here. mind, we need to cut them some slack so that this might be more psychological even, you know, like we're trying to help out and be good partners and... Yep. Well, yeah. I think when Brenda gets back from vacation... Okay. Can, All right. I'm, yeah, I was just... Sense. It was just my personal opinion. Yep. No, I agree. Okay. Assistant superintendent? Um, Casey, I wasn't sure what this what meant when you said Assistant Superintendent Department of Technology. Oh, okay. So we had a little terminology question and it ended... it. It ended up as a parenthesis in the class comp proposal for the war for the special town meeting warrant, but it is something we're going to have to deal with at some point. We had a discussion at the personnel board meeting on Monday night before I joined you for the planning board meeting. Um, That's for public the, works. Yeah, the three meetings in a row on Monday. <laughs> but the basic the basic concern is, in some portions of the compensation plan, it references public works, and actually we're not organized as a public works department even though we function as one so the superintendent oversees various disciplines that include sewer highway cemeteries buildings um, and other road and other types of maintenance so that's essentially a public works um, strictly transportation or highway is one discipline and to meet the need of what i saw you'll see in the compensation plan itself that we submitted with the warrant, you'll see where it says, for instance, admin assistant highway in parentheses public works, and then assistant superintendent highway in parentheses public works, because those two positions support public works, but we functionally haven't organized. So I just want to be sure that people understand as we move forward, particularly with the class comp study, that this is an element that needs to be addressed at some point right. because we are functioning, Kevin's various shops are functioning together under an umbrella that isn't acknowledged really officially. And it was actually yeah, a conversation. So I want you I all to be aware. To, yeah, but I thought we had to organize something to, with the legislature or something to become a public works. It's an acceptance of the statute. There's a statute about it. So we have to do something uh, like through town meeting or something, right? Right. And so all I'm saying is, is keep that in your minds as we move forward, because that may be something that we ask everyone to consider. And honestly, I think there's been a resistance in, in the entire time that I worked here before, Carolyn, there was a resistance to do that, even though it was functionally working in that way. Um, it's just as, as the town evolves and as services become more complex, it's something that eventually I think we need to keep on the horizon somewhere. I'm not saying it gets solved next year or the year after, but simply it, it plays a part in how that those particular functions operate and how they coordinate with the rest of the town's operations police police and and town hall and what we provide for senior services that sort of thing all of this plays into that because we re require that support in order for us to function okay okay so Having it in parentheses isn't really going to hurt anything. No, right? because it's unofficial, uh, yep. but it does direct people to the to the functional identification of the superintendent position. Um, yep. Position is identified as public works because that's what it okay. is. Right. But yep. I wanted to differ. I I was afraid to differentiate too far because there was it, it's a little confusing. And so if there's a question on town meeting floor, that's the answer. Is function okay. this as a working those disciplines together, but it isn't fully operational in that manner because we haven't accepted the MGL to to provide the structure. Well, maybe we should at town meeting. I don't know. 
All right. We'll have to look into it. We have a lot of work to do with that. Whole yeah. Thing. I mean, I there's know. a whole bunch of structure. And I know. Right, I so. know. Okay. Well, that's why it's been put off. Yeah. I mean, all right. Casey, is there anything else you want to update us on? Sorry, I muted myself. I want to, because I talked to myself. Um, I wanted to let you know that we did, in fact, finalize our first CARES Act report. And that was with a lot of help from Brenda and Jennifer in particular. The two, those two people have really helped me pull that together. We did get some assistance because there was a little bit of confusion in the submission, how we were supposed to get certain information into our workbook. It was an Excel workbook. But right now we're focusing on the FEMA grant submission and that's much more complex and time consuming. Hence my request to um, have someone work on a stipend in a stipended position to help us. Um, so I've been finalizing that. I'm going to pass that ball or that baton on to Jennifer to work with George to finish up what we can on this end because it's due next Wednesday. And I'm supposed to take two days off. I'm hoping I can. <laughs> yes, you know you are. You um, are. <laughs> because my brain is dead. <laughs> but it, it is, is going to impact what you see in the next several days. So I won't be able to start the special town meeting warrant motions until I get back. Um, okay, I will okay. be in contact with Lisa if I need to be. Um, but I wasn't planning on doing that because there is one correction we're going to make in a motion related to article four, which is the CPC article. Would, uh, and that was the change in language for that park grant because it would appear now we don't have to borrow because we have the funding. And I don't know what CPC did. CPC met tonight to address that request from John to reevaluate his updated um, information for the park or for the North Main Street lot. So I don't know what they decided because I was on the meeting with you but I wanted to be able to let you know is if they approve that, um, we wouldn't have, we may not have to borrow. So that's really the language that would change in the motion. Um, and there's a couple of things that I think will be addressed at the hearing on the 21st. And so this is why I reminded you earlier. Um, as you know, you discussed with the planning board on Monday, the a collaborative approach to the marijuana bylaw and you finalized language for a hearing on the 21st of October at seven o'clock. So I wanted yep. to make sure that I streamline your agenda so that you have enough time to do that business, but also get onto that call so that you can provide input in case the public has questions for you as well. So okay. that's why I was a little leery, I'm a little leery about adding too much to that agenda. Um, no, I don't. On the other hand, it's that hearing process is key because the language is on the special town meeting warrant. And there was one question that's um, not substantive that I think will come up at the meeting. So I have to get back to somebody on that. But for purposes of motions and other and talking points, that's really going to come together next week. And so the moderator um, had some questions for me in an email. And I just wanted to clarify it. I, you know, between the three of you, myself, and some language questions I had for Lisa Mead, our, our town council, um, that warrant came together in, a, in about a week. So it was pretty much fresh off the presses when I sent it out to the moderator and the other constituents involved in those groups, like the Finance Committee, Capital Improvement Committee. That's, you know, those groups. Because with the change in the park language, which is, art, um, I shouldn't say park language, with the change in the North Main Street language on Article 4, CIPC and probably Finance Committee need to meet to address it. So mm -hmm. there was a sub subsequent question from the moderator about how we were handling that. So I wanted to let everybody know, Jennifer's working to schedule meetings for both CIPC and hopefully Finance Committee. Um, I haven't heard from Skip, but I think I I think we're trying to get a hold of him while I'm gone so we can schedule that. Um, if the board okay. needs to have a meeting next week, um, for instance, if you wanted to have a meeting on the 14th, you would need to decide that no later than Friday because right. you would have to post. 
you would have to post no, Friday okay. to meet that deadline because Monday's a holiday. I don't, um, I don't anticipate that, but if something were to come up, Jennifer can take care of that yeah, with you. Yeah, let us know if you find you need something. But I think right, and so my sure. question for you is, is there anything you need of me that you think yeah. you're going to need yeah. before I leave? Yes, I need you to take two days off. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's all I need. Please. <laughs> yeah, we don't want you to burn out. I don't right. want you to quit. We can't afford to quit. <laughs> Okay. So um, thank you for voting those stipends and the temporary hires. I really appreciate it. I think it'll be useful for us. Uh, the, only, the, only question, the only question I have um, for next week is, is there still a planning board meeting on the 15th? Yes. You don't have to go to this. No, that's, that's actually, the no, it's the planning board meeting on the 15th is for the site plan review remand from okay. the court on the South Deerfield DG Series LLC site plan review. So, so we were not doing executive session with the planning board prior no. to? Okay. No, I don't think so. And then no. the other um, Actually, the executive session has already happened with the planning board. Yeah. Adam's so, already so. talked to them. Oh, and I wanted to tell you, so Lisa can't come to our town meeting on the 22nd. I think Adam's okay. coming. Okay. That's um, why you Adam, see Adam in all of these emails because Adam, she's keeping Adam up to date on okay. all the correspondence. Um, I think there was a conflict. If that changes, she'll let us know. Yeah, okay. No, that's fine. Um, the other, the other question I have was on the 16th. I have 9:30 a.m. MVP meeting. Oh, Is I that think that was Chris Curtis's meeting. Um, it's the MVP uh, core group meeting. Right. Is that that's still on, right? I that think so, that yes. Changed, that changed from the 14th to the 16th, right? I believe so. Okay. All right. I had an item unanticipated. We could just, it was about the um, ZBA maybe needing some help uh, with some peer review or help with their decision. And um, I received an email today. I think you have, oh, I was, I think I forwarded it to Casey to look at. Um, it was about maybe helping that a member had reached out and wanted some help as they formalized their opinion and needed some peer review help for that. But um, it was a fee on that. and. We'll probably have to discuss that at a later meeting because we don't, you know, that's something I don't have on the agenda. I just wanted to let you know that they were reaching out for help, and while I want to support them, we have to kind of discuss that. I don't know where the money would come from for that. Um, uh, usually, well, that comes from our legal peer review. It's it's professional, so that comes from our contractor. Contracted services. Services, right, right Casey? I think it depends on the yeah. issue, and I do think because. That's actually a question I think I would pass to Adam. Yeah. Um, so, yeah because we've had that same question in ConCom meetings. And in fact, I was working okay. on something to try to get some information out to them. Perfect. I'll let, I'll let, I just want to, I passed that on. I think I sent you that email. You so did. I'll just let you know that. You did. So, okay. Good. That's it. That's all I got. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Oh, oh. public comment. Sorry. Right? Yep. Yeah, public comment. Does is, is anyone have a public comment? Okay. Um, I will take a Wait, motion to adjourn. Do we? No. No public no. comment. Yep. Oh. No public. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Chris. Thank you, there. <laughs> um, I'm starting to get to know that number. Yeah, we know that. Right. I, I don't. I don't freak out when I see that number anymore. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, Dave Wolfram, second. Okay. All those in favor. Aye, Kevin McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn. Be safe out there, everyone. Okay.